right, cool guys. Um, well, here you go. We can end the class in three minutes because right after we read these four things, okay? No, not really. I was kidding. No, we got a bonus. We got a, we'll oh. actually dive into there these really a little deeper. That's okay. Yeah, hang with us. We doing something wrong? Can we? Can I get you another sandwich, Holly? <laughs> hey, listen, when the black lab wants a sandwich, give the man a sandwich. Cookie. <laughs> cookie. There was no cookies over there, man. I was disappointed. You hit him. You hit him. You hit him from me. All right, so here's the four steps. Number one, make a big list. What do we just do before lunch? Does everybody have a bigger list now than when you came in here at the room this morning? Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Okay, if you don't, that's your fault. Awesome. We'll dive a little deeper on this. Step two is reach out. We're going to talk about what that looks like, what are some good approaches, what does work, what doesn't work. We're going to talk about like what works when actually explaining EXP. Number three is really like we could call it explain EXP. Instead, we call it watchthemodelexplain.com with your, with your prospect. And then step four is a three-way call or Zoom. It's a validation. It's showing your, you know, the strength of kind of what we're all doing. So these are the steps. Like, they're really not that complicated. That said, there is some depth to it. As Curtis said earlier, if your mind's not right, though, this stuff's really not going to matter as we go into some of the technical stuff. One of, probably the first mentor both of us had, for sure the first real mentor I ever considered in my life, wrote a book. And the title says it all. Deanna, you're going to know this one. The title of this book says it all. If how-tos were enough, we would all be skinny, rich, and happy. Yes. <laughs> so if these four steps were enough, we would like we don't like we would have taught the class. Everyone would have taught would be teaching the class somewhere else today. So we are going to dive a little bit deeper and not just talk about the how-tos, but talk about the whys behind them and go a little bit deeper on those. Yeah. So let's kind of let's finish out number one. We made the list. Here's the deal, though. Recruiting. You want to write this down. Recruiting is a process not an event. Recruiting is a process, not an event. So we all just went through a 20 minute exercise or event, if you will, of making a big list. But I'm gonna encourage you and challenge you that that has to be a living, breathing, growing well, document. If you never update that list, then it was an event for you. But that list should also be a process. It should continue to live on. It doesn't necessarily have to live on that piece of paper. Maybe, it, like Fred and I, share a notepad on iCloud, as well as a lot of other places that we have names saved. And whatever that is for you, that's fine. But if, if this is the only time you wrote down names, just be real with yourself. That's an event. You made it an event. We, we know that this is a process. How many of you have a piece of paper, a spreadsheet, a CRM, a database that holds your buyer and seller sphere of influence or people who have sold houses with you. How many of you guys have one of those? All right, cool. Um, has anybody like done, like you put it all together and then you were finished or do like did you sometime throughout the year or every couple of days you find yourself adding to that? Is there anybody that puts more names in their sphere or their database? Okay. Four of you add names to it. This is the same exercise, right? Like at the end of the day, if you've got 10 people on your list, it's going to be really hard to grow a big EXP organization. It's going to be really hard to have residual income that exceeds your residual bills, right? Just like if we were teaching in a class to brand new real estate agents, which I know most of you are not in this room, we wouldn't say, hey, just go put a list together, maybe like the five or 10 people in your family and your friends and call them and you're going to be off to a great start. Your real estate career will look amazing. Like none of us would ever teach a brand new agent that, right? We would say, you've got to have a big, deep database. You're laughing, right, Deanna? Right, like your database matters, right? Like we gotta have a big database, maybe not like thousands, but we gotta have a significantly hey, sized database. We're in Texas, we can say it. Okay. Size matters, y'all. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Right. Am I right or am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? We've gotta have a big database, right? And then like obviously we have to communicate with that database at some level as well, right? Which is what we're gonna talk about here, okay? So I will just answer this for you now. Um, I personally don't believe in automation and CRMs and all this stuff. I'm not saying like you couldn't go find a CRM to put your big list into, but I will tell you if you're looking for the shortcut to, well, cool, I got my big list. Like, like, is there any sort of like drip plans you guys can like give me? And then the, all these people are going to come up. No, no, the big list is in an effort to, to, to move right into number two, right, Kevin? Which is we got to reach out. All right, we got to have conversations with people now. Here's, here's how I've run my real estate business. I'm not saying this is the, the only way or the best way. It's what's worked for me is I don't treat everyone exactly the same. The way I approach them, my first phone call to them, 
it, a lot of it just depends on what's my previous relationship with them, what's my current relationship, this is my first conversation. Do I know information about them? Have I known them for five years or 10 years, right? Can you guys all, are you guys tracking with that on how that works in your real estate sales business, right? So like a lead that comes in, say from Op City, which is a you know cold referral that gets transferred to me, is a whole lot different than somebody who has sent me 10 referrals over the last five years, calling me and telling me it's time for them to, uh, to move on to their next house. Totally different. I approach those calls differently. Same thing with real estate agents. So one method that's worked for a lot of people I know is like the A's, B's, and C's kind of, kind of sorting, if you will. That's something we do, A's, B's, and C's. You might use a different star, moon, I don't know, some other shape, circle, system. We use A's, B's, the and moon C's. moon is shape. Uh, okay, crescent. I don't know. Okay, I, don't I don't know, know the name of that. No, just the question. Uh, we're in Texas and the shape doesn't matter. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, the size does. The shape does not. Big, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was just close funny, right, Curtis? Yeah. Okay. We're working on it. We're working on it. All right, we're getting there. All right. You've been extremely funny the last couple days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So and, I've I'm been locked up. up. I've, been, I've been locked up for so long. By the way, we're gonna give you two monsters every time before you go on stage because you were really good this morning yeah, too. You were so great. One more time. Yeah, yesterday you asked people what they got out of it, and they, you know, today you're like, yeah, we're just moving on. <laughs> um, dude, the awkward silence was really awkward. Anyway. We'll come yeah. back later. Yeah. You offended everybody. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, all right. So for us, A's is like it's it's so, it's like Curtis with us. Curtis knew. He's like, I, I'm tight. Me asking for a sale, or when you sit, are you open minded about your business? Like, that's never going to ruin our relationship, right? It would only ruin it if Curtis was going back to, like, say, KW and then asked us to consider it. That would ruin it. But we have a warm enough relationship. We've known each other for a decade. You could actually go right into that reach out. I was like, hey, Fred, um, as you know, I moved my business over to EXP. It's been awesome. I'm curious, are you, are you open minded enough about your business to take a look at this model? I, I think you might actually find some good things in it. Sure. I can do that with him because it's warm. I'm not saying that's the script for it, but because it's warm, it can be as direct as I want, and it's good. He's an A for me. B's and C's, maybe not so direct. I, yeah, I think what you'll find is, it, and some of you guys, as you were probably writing your list, like you're like, oh gosh, like what are they gonna have me do with this list, right? We're not gonna say you have to run out and call all those people and just you know, follow some script we're gonna give you next and call them all and say, hey, you should come join EXP. I, I firmly believe that you have to look at that list and now you have to go sort it and you have to decide, hey, which of the people on my list, as you're saying, A's, that I could take a little bit more of a direct approach with and say, would you be open to learning more about EXP? Like, would you give me 20 or 30 minutes of your time? I know you've heard about EXP, Kevin, but would you give me 20 or 30 minutes of your time to actually learn and understand EXP at a deeper level? Like. You're probably not moving tomorrow, I get that, but would you be open-minded enough to at least learn about the model for maybe a, a future decision? Absolutely. Right, so that's that's my A list. Now, if you go through your list, and it, like no one's an A, we got a problem. Can we all agree with that? Like, so this is not, like as Curtis said, this is not like, oh cool, I put a list together, but everybody's a B and C, so now I get to leave here today, and I feel really good about myself, it's safe and secure, I don't have to call anybody. No, I hope that maybe you'll circle your A's here today, or you'll put a star next to them. Like, Find the people on there the that, that you, or, or the moon shape. Um, <laughs> find the people on there that you feel you know comfortable enough to reach out directly to. We all have those people. I don't know how many that is, but a, good, a, a certain percentage of your list should be A's. Now, B's and C's, <coughs> can you reach out to a B or C and, and have a direct script and say, hey, Kevin, we don't know each other super well, but you know, I, I respect your business, or we did a cross sale with each other last year and really thought that was great. Like, I, I gotta ask, like, you probably have heard of EXP Realty, the brokerage that I'm at. Would you be open to, to actually understanding and learning more about it? Would you be willing to sit down and spend a little time understanding it? I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty happy where I'm at. So I, I can, but the point is I can ask the question. I don't know how he's gonna respond is all I'm trying to say, right? It's like calling your B's and C's in your sphere. The A calls are always easier. The A's are the people that we go out to lunch with or dinner with, they're in our sphere. They're the people that have done business with us in the past. They're our neighbors that we have a relationship with. They're, you know, they're friends of, uh, of us because our kids are friends, whatever that is, they're easier. It doesn't mean that we can't call a B or C that's in our database and ask them about EXP. I'm not gonna tell you like if you should or shouldn't do that, but what I would say is when you see B's and C's on your list, the thing that I would encourage you to do is like, how can I bring them value? 
Like, let's stop for a minute. Before lunch, two people stood up to the front of this room from Chicago Title, right? Did you guys see what they did? Like, did you guys notice? I'm gonna go back for a second. Oh, I'm not gonna go that far back because Curtis is 152 slides are there. Okay, <laughs> um, I forgot. I, uh, this is that we're in the same slide deck. That's just the beginning. They were recruiting us to come to Chicago Title. Did you did you notice that? Yeah. But they didn't say we're Chicago Title. We're great. You should do business with us. We bought you lunch today. Thanks so much. Like like they stood right here. And we're like, hey, like I, I've learned some tricks and some things. Like. Like, let's sit down face to face. I'd like to learn a little bit more about your business. What's working really well? Maybe we can refine that. Did you hear that script? Right? And, and then maybe we can find out where some of the opportunities are, where you'd like to grow in your business. And maybe we can put some strategies together to help you get there. It was a recruiting conversation. It just happened to be a group one. Did you notice that? Yeah. Like that? So they're black labs. They're, they're black labs. Absolutely. Like how, like I said to them afterwards, like, that was really great. I've sat through a lot of like title reps and lenders and home warranty companies coming up at lunches during events we've done and events I've attended. And most of them, I'm like, would you just hurry up and get off? Like, like it's all about you and your programs. And like, we offer this service and it's so great. Like they did not take that approach. They took the approach of like, Hey, we would love the opportunity to maybe earn the right to sit down with you to learn a little bit more about your business. See if there's an opportunity for us here to improve upon it. So I look at B's and C's on my list as their they're recruiting conversations a little less direct about EXP. It's a little bit more B's and C's. Is there anything I can bring to them of value that would help them? Is there an event going on next week that, that maybe I could invite them to that we're doing here in Austin that might be sharing a little bit more about best practices for getting your offers accepted in this market? Cool. My B's and C's, I'm going to invite them to an event. I'm going to try and bring value to them, right? Maybe there's a video that Nolly just put out because he has like 5,092 of them that he just filmed last 5, week. 5,091 of them because one of them got taken down. Yeah, I'm saying that. I love Nolly. He has so many awesome videos. So if you ask Nolly a question, he just goes, yeah, I got a video for that. Have you ever experienced that? Right? So like maybe, maybe you look through your list and B's and C's and you go, cool, like what's the need that that person has, right? And Or maybe you see somebody talking or whatever, and you're, you're listening, you go, I'm gonna send them this. Or maybe you look through the EXP education calendar, because there's a couple classes every day, I don't know if you do you that. that. Just a couple, <laughs> a couple every day, right? That have tons of value, and you just reach out and you say, hey, I, I or maybe you go to the class and you take notes and you send it to them, right? So that, that's my impression here of, of making a big list. A lot of people think the reach out is all about going direct on EXP. And I'm not trying to give you permission to never ask somebody to look at EXP, but we all have to be honest and say, if we make a big enough list, there's going to be some people on that list that we just don't have enough rapport with or haven't brought enough value to. And we might want to bring some value to them before we go direct to them about EXP. That's my two cents anyway. And the other piece is like, and I just fell on my chair. There's your chair there. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Um, the, the other piece of that is like, they might actually be reaching out to you, right? So maybe you've experienced that, maybe you haven't. If you haven't, maybe check your digital body language as Curtis mentioned earlier in his presentation. But sometimes the reach out is actually them going, hey, Nolly, man, I noticed you moved over to EXP. I mean, you, you could not notice that Nolly moved over to EXP, but like, what do you think so far? Like, do you like it? Is you, So they, they can actually come to you and that, that will happen. Trust me, the more, the more all about it and all in you are, as Curtis talked about it, the more inbound calls you will get guaranteed. That's a fact. So some of it will be reaching, they'll be reaching in. That's agent attraction. I'm not betting on agent attraction. I'm betting on my ability to go out and recruit and help people. That said, it will be supplemented. Kind of think of it like this. Um, in uh, KW, they used to teach like prospecting based marketing enhanced. Like that, like this will be recruiting based and it'll be attraction enhanced. I just made that up right now. I'm totally decent. Can we get our trademark out real quick? Move it to shape. That's not bad. That's crazy. All right. Cool. But it could be reaching. The point is, there's a conversation to be had now about EX. Let's just say this somebody wants or is willing to get more information on EXP Realty. Like, that's, that's what we want. That's what step two is all about, whether it's in or out. Okay, um, I'm gonna go through in a minute and tell you what doesn't work with Reach Out, but I'm gonna give you a quick script that I think, Curtis, you mentioned this morning, uh, there's an event, right? Brent goes put an event on. There's a, a, like a kind of a B-level speaker coming to it. What's his name again? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, okay, all right, cool. Tony Robbins, I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He's, he's okay, uh, a couple people know about him. Um, when's, when's that event, Curtis? 
I'm sure you've already booked your plane tickets. I know how much you love to fly. I did. I booked my plane ticket, hotel, and we started to, we're putting a party together this year. Yeah, I think it's August uh, 16th, 17th, 17th, 17th through 19th. 19th. There you go. I was in the ballpark. 17th yeah. through the 19th. Uh, so here, you want to reach out to some people on your list today? Maybe it's direct. Maybe it's not even direct about EXP. Here's your script. Write this down. It's really long. This is really good, guys. It's, really, it's, it's going to take you a while. Hold on. Curtis, do you like Tony Robbins? Question mark. Do you have to use the actual question mark? I think the question mark's good. Curtis. Obviously, the, like if their names, the if their name's Nolly, don't call him Curtis, okay, or whatever. But hey, so and so, do you like Tony Robbins? Like, think about it for a minute, guys. Like, we have an event with Tony Robbins coming up in Dallas, Texas, in a couple of months. Like, when was the last time a real estate brokerage, Remax, KW, Cobalt Banker, I don't know, name had Tony Robbins like headlining their event? I don't know of any. Like this is a script I've legitimately used probably 20 times in the last couple of weeks. Going through my list, trying to just make contact with people, trying to bring value, just simply saying, do you like Tony Robbins, right? Yeah, I do, what, what, what's up? Hey, I'm going to this event in August, you know, you want, you want to join me, good. I was just thinking when you were saying that, the difference between EXP, EXP is obviously agent owned and agent led versus uh, corporate owned. Such a paradigm shift in the way this business is. Like that is, that, you didn't say it today, maybe you did, and I was taking notes on something else, but EXP isn't like a little bit better, it's not marginally better. You guys, it is, it's dramatically better. You can't even compare the EXP model versus any other real estate model on the planet. They're not even close. They're not in the same planet. Stratosphere, some big word. Not on the same moon, something like that. Yes, exactly, you different know, shapes. Right? They are different shapes. Um, turn to your last page real quick. So I'm leaving for four steps for a second. Hey, look, there are the dates are right there. It's called the Build Conference. Here's the deal. You can't reach out to people though and ask them if they like Tony Robbins if you aren't planning to go to the event yourself. Let's be real. Right? So what did Curtis say earlier about events? What happens at events? Nice Anybody? Out. Nah. What, what kind of decisions are made at events? Big change. Big decisions are made at events. Right? Like you guys are here today. Some of you brought guests, some of you brought your EXP revenue share group, your folks with you, your downline, whatever word you like there, right? Like you brought people with you. So I'm gonna tell you like, stop attending events without bringing guests, right? Nolly, you came to an event last month in Scottsdale, right, Brent goes event or whatever. How many people did you, ha did you have that group? 20, 20, 20. 20 in your revenue share group. So 10% roughly of your revenue share group came to that event. How fired up did some of those people leave? Ooh, they're fired up, man. They're fired up. I mean, they're to the moon. Right? <laughs> to the crescent oh, shape. To the yeah. crescent shape. We got some of these rooms in here. Yep. A lot of you guys are in the room here. Yeah, absolutely. So here, here's the deal, guys. Like, number one, go buy your ticket today and go buy an extra for a guest, especially if it's 96% sold out. Now, some of the reason it's 96% sold out is because people like Eric and Deanna and Kevin and myself, we've got like five and 10 tickets over here on the side that we're holding for the guests that we're inviting. Okay. So I've been sending messages, but I, as I mentioned, hey, do you like Tony Robbins? I sent that message to an agent friend of ours in Florida a couple weeks ago, and she wrote back, and anyway, she's like, like she's like, are you buying my ticket? And oh, to be really honest with you, this particular agent, I don't wanna buy her ticket. I like her, she's nice, but I don't think she's ready enough to move to EXP. I just thought she would like Tony Robbins. And I said, no, I just wanted to see if you were coming with me. She bought a ticket and a plane ticket and her hotel. <laughs> she's coming. That was black rod. Like, that was, that was black rod. Well, I mean, right. Now I'm over here holding 10 more right. tickets that I'm gonna give away. But, but like, now we're bringing 11. <laughs> I didn't say you had to buy a ticket for all of them. I just asked if you'd invite people to it. Right, I mean, come on. Like, if, if, you guys, this business is about being a professional inviter. Yeah. It really is. Like, I hope I don't I introduce her to those of you guys at that event. Yeah, yeah but absolutely really not. It's <laughs> a like six it. foot tall man. <laughs> um, Brent Go, I wasn't, we weren't in Cabo. We had to miss that event. But Brent Go said in his opening speech, like, guys, this business is owned by the promoters. This business is owned and controlled by the promoters. You may not identify as a promoter, you're allowed to change that. It is not a life sentence to be an introvert. Be a promoter for the sake of your business. You too, Nolly. All of us. Hey, Nolly like to be introverts and still be successful. This is not a real thing. Caldwell and Baker are last names. Keller and Williams are last names. 
They're better promoters than the rest of us. That's all so far, in a way. Williams and Williams. <laughs> are great promoters. And we're, we're all going to get better at promoting. That's, what the, that's who this business is controlled by. That's what, guys, that's the power of events, which we'll talk about more later. Yep. All right. All right. So back to our list. Make a big list. We've hit that. Reach out. Okay. So let's talk about what an unsuccessful reach out looks like. Because as we started this class off by saying, you and I screwed that up quite a bit. So what, what are some things to not do, Kevin? What have we learned? Doesn't work real well. You don't want to have rev share breath. You guys know what rev share breath is? It's kind of like commission breath. You might have that when you first got your license. Or maybe you you know an agent that's had commission breath, but the whole conversation is just filled with energy around, I want to make money off you, Will. I can't wait till you come. Will, I'm going to tell you about EXP Realty, and you're going to love it because it's going to make me money. Like, that's the energy that comes from rep share breath. So what I don't want to do is like, I'm going to tell you about EXP. It's amazing. You're going to love it. We get all this money. We make this money for coming. You should come. Let's go. Like, that, that doesn't work. That's going to fail probably 999 times out of a thousand, maybe more. It's not <coughs> How, what's another way of not doing it? Yeah, so first off, like, care about people, right? You got, I mean, that, that's what you're saying when you say no red shirt, sure, but like, it, it, yeah, it's gotta be about the other person you're talking about, guys. Like, it has to be, you have to have a vested interest in them. Now, you know, some of your, like, A people on your list, there might be your good buddies, you're like, like recently, right? We said to a guy, like a friend of ours, like, he hates the brokerage he's at. Absolutely hates it. He just hasn't hated it enough to wake up and move yet. Okay, and I, I like he knows we want him at EXP, but I, I've gone to the place where I'm like, dude, this isn't about me. Like I'm doing okay over here. I don't know how else to tell you without showing you my rep share screenshots, which I'm not going to. But like I, I, I'm doing just fine without you. I don't want the $2,800 or whatever your quote unquote work to me for coming. I want you to have the experience and get access to all the stuff that I have at EXP. Like, would you please just listen to it? Now, I didn't always start there, but with this guy, like that's where I am. And so I've tried to have that type of mentality. Like if you can come from a place of like, look, of course it would be good for me if you came over, but I'm coming to you because you. it would be better for you and your business if you came over to eXp. And I just want to know if you'd be willing to look at it and explore it and understand it deeper, right? So that's the first thing. You got to get rid of the revenue share breath. Second thing, stop talking so much about it. Here's what I, here's what I mean. When you reach out, What's ineffective, Patrick, is, hey, Patrick, I, 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 man, I was giving you a call today. I was thinking about you. I really think you'd love EXP, man. The stock is so great. I don't know if you knew this, but we can buy it at a 10% discount. There's also this thing called the Icon Agent Award. And then we get these awards. You get an award for every time you sell a house, you get an award. You get an award for every time you recruit an agent, you get an award. Every time you cap, you get an award, right? And if you, start, if it's, if you tell too much, like, it just doesn't work. Okay, like trust us on that. Like I know you're excited about it, but when you when you sell too much, it just it repels people. What did you say? There's a, a great quote. People don't like to be sold. Oh, okay, what's the everybody quote? Everybody wants to buy. Nobody wants to be sold. Thank you. That's a John Cheplak quote. And I mean, the, another thing that John also says is, you guys you want to have an open loop, meaning. Like when you come in like that, like let me just tell you, tell you, tell you, jam it down your throat, you're giving them all the information or at least a portion of it. There is no opportunity there for an open loop for pilots to come back and go, wait, there's stock? So what do you mean there's 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 some award? Tell me more about that. If I if, if in my pitch to get him to listen is all the highlights, all the sizzle, there's he has no absolutely no reason, unless he's like one of that one person out of a thousand that's gonna buy from that, he has, there's no incentive for him to go tell me more. And what we want is tell me more. Because as Fred said earlier, recruiting is a process, not an event, right? And if it's a process, that means there's gonna be multiple interactions. It's not all happening from one phone call. Even though we all think, like all, we're all guilty uh, as DHP agents, we all like to think we all move super fast. Even for those of us who move fast, wasn't that fast. And so we forget about that. So we want to start an open loop so there can be a dialogue in the process of recruiting. So what doesn't work, commission breath. What doesn't work, vomit of the mouth or closing of the loop, whatever you, you prefer. This may be a little controversial, but Kevin and I have come to this belief strongly. We, we're gonna, there's some people in EXP who will disagree with us on this, but what I also think doesn't work 
is sending people a video and asking them to watch it. There's such a small percentage of the population that will actually watch the video that you send them, that will actually, with all of their attention, with no distractions, sit down in front of their computer, without their email, without their kids in the background, without the TV on, without music playing, and watch a 20 or 30 or 40 minute video. Let's, uh, hold on, a little expert. Who has touched their phone or computer at one point today while someone was talking? Like, no, I, I have, okay. You all, we all wanted to be in this room. We already love EXP. <laughs> And we can't do that without full undivided attention for the day. So like, think about that. Someone who's not currently at EXP that might have their guard up, do you really think they're gonna watch your video undistracted, like full attention? The answer to that is no, guys. Like, you just proved it. We all proved it. Does anybody have a really great listing presentation <laughs> video that you email out to your sellers, they watch it, and then they return the signed paperwork and you never go to their house? <laughs> Oh, it doesn't work? Oh, okay, all right. I don't think it works in agent recruiting either. I just don't think, I don't care how great the video is, I don't care how short it is or how long it is, people won't watch it, they won't be engaged with it, the distractions are too much, like it just doesn't work, okay? And, and this is again why I say we disagree, I'm disagreeing with my own upline. Jay Kinder has some amazing scripts if you wanna try sending the video out about how to send it out and then how to lock people down, so to speak. That's probably not how he would say it, but the sales strategy of you know getting somebody to make a commitment on when they're gonna watch it by, right? So that you can call and follow up with them. But here's the problem, is that most people will make commitments, but they won't follow through. So you, I can send a video to Kevin and say, hey man, will you watch this? And he goes, yeah, dude, I'll watch it this weekend. I'll definitely have a little bit of downtime. Cool, we'll be all right if I gave you a call on Monday morning, maybe around nine, and just check in with you and get your thoughts on the video. What are you gonna say? Uh, yeah. Sure. Cool. So I ring, ring. I call you Monday at nine. Like, hey, hey Kevin. Hey, it's Fred. Well, what'd you think of that video? Oh, dude, I got busy. It was hot, so we went swimming. Oh, uh, dude, I, I get it, dude. I got busy this weekend too. Um, uh, what do you think? You have a chance to watch it again, like maybe tonight or over the next couple of days? Oh yeah, no, probably today. Like it's, I mean, it's Monday. I don't have anything to do. Okay, cool. So yeah, so well, I'll, give you, I'll give you a call back tomorrow, right? So oh, yeah. I, I call him back tomorrow, and if I'm lucky, he picks up. I'm like, hey, Kevin, it's Freddie. What'd you think of that video? Yeah, well, first of all, I didn't want to pick up the phone. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> okay, but let's say I did. Oh, uh, dude, you know what? I, I, I had a client fly into town. It's an investor. They're super important. So I, oh, yeah. I, I just showed their houses they're not going to buy. <laughs> you mean, <laughs> I was already had nine, nine offers on them. I got, I got it. Yeah, it was busy. Yeah. Cool. All right, do you think you'll have a chance to watch it maybn't. maybe later this week after you find it? Yeah, probably, probably like maybe tonight or something. And then it doesn't, by then I keep following up and he just ghosts me eventually, guys. Do you get this? <laughs> it is awkward to continue following up with somebody to ask them if they've watched a video. Like there's only so many follow-ups you can do there before eventually that turns into well, a- Well then, then it's like a fine line and the cops can get called. <laughs> it gets a little stalkerish, like it really does. There's only, like only with A's, like Fred to Nolly with this pouty face picture that he sent Nolly for not, for, for not watching the video, for yeah. not following, for not returning, like not doing it. Like you can only do that because there's ten years of deep relationship there yeah. going into it. I got away with I, I got away with sending a video to Nolly, so hear me on that. But Nolly, did you watch it the first time you told me you were going to? No. Did you pick up the phone on every other follow up that where I called you and texted you? I was pretty good at following up with you. Uh, uh, oh, you were? Do you need me to pull that text thread out again? <laughs> <laughs> What, what, I would tell what? you, there's a lot of text on one side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we all get amnesia about the way we were converting to XP. Like, you know, it was like, I saw it. I was boom, I was gone. How, how did I finally actually get you to, like, follow up? Like, you did ignore me at least once or twice. How did I get you to respond to me? Finally, he sends me this pouty face picture. Pouty face selfie. And then a selfie of, of him pouting, like, dude, you can't even watch the stinking video. And so I was like, all right, I'll watch your stinking video. Just because of that. I was fine. Like, you but know, I had an A relationship with you. You're going to send pouty face pictures to people of B and C's on your list? <laughs> no. I, I, I have a friend. They, they, they had the cops called for doing that. So just yeah. don't. Trust me. <laughs> don't don't be in somebody I know. Yeah. So again, I don't think Rev Share Birth works. I don't think vomit of the mouth to try to get people excited about EXP on the phone works. And I, I don't think sending a, a video out via text or email or messenger and then chasing people to find out if they watch it, I don't think it works, okay? Now, you guys try to prove us wrong. Go ahead, Dion. We, the, no, we, we've been talking to a guy in our town, he's what, third, fourth biggest agent, 
And the running joke I have with him at every event, I said, how many videos you get lately? He goes, God. I, and he's yep. had like 15 different people from around the country send him the same yep. damn video, yep. and he has never watched it. Yep. He's wow. not. He's and not I said, when you're yep. ready, come over, let's get a glass yep. of wine, we'll watch the video together. How this afternoon? Yeah, if you want to, if you want to be <laughs> different, like if you have, be different. if you have notable top agents on your list of 50, like instead of reaching out and asking if they want to know about EXP, say, hey, I was just at a class today, and we were like, Learn a little about, about EXP and recruiting, just out of curiosity. How many people have ever like sent you a video and asked you to watch it? <laughs> Be different. Send that message. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, like that story you just shared, that is not unique. How many people have we? I don't know who it was recently. Somebody out of the blue one day was like, "Look at this guy!" Like sends me a friend request and like immediately like, couldn't even <laughs> yeah. spell. He, you know, he's like, "Watch this video," but like, it, 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 I get him. I get them from EXP agents. Yeah? Like, I've been here for three years, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I check my wife, I mean, check the whole LinkedIn profile before we send the message. And they don't know any of them. He's yeah. like, I don't even know these people. So it's, it's ineffective, guys. It doesn't work. I'm sorry. Okay? Now, again, yeah, I sent a video to Nolly. I picked up the phone and talked to him first. He said, sure, I'll look at it. Give me some more info. So I sent him the video, right? But then I still had to chase him down. You had to fly to Austin. We did. And then we had to fly to Austin to lock him down, right? Even after he, he watched the video, we absolutely did. That was Kevin's idea, by the way. That's an A relationship. <laughs> yeah. Guys, that's an A relationship. And not every, we don't all have enough A's. We don't all have enough A's. You didn't have to, you chose No, exactly. We wanted to. I mean, we wanted to partner with Nolly on this. He meant enough to us that we're like, dude, we want to come out and hang out with you for the day. It's been too long. Like, let's visit. Let's talk. Let's see what this looks like. All right. So let's, it's okay. So we just so talk about three, three things that don't work. What yeah. does work? I think it's short, simple, and to the point. I don't know that there's a, a I'm not going to necessarily say there's a one script line, right? The, but I think at some level, it's, hey, Kevin, spread here. Dude, I, like, we've known each other for a long time. I know you, you know of EXP. Would you be open? Would you be open-minded? Would you be willing to give me 20 to 30 minutes of your time to learn a little bit more about EXP? Yeah, of course, dude, of course. You've done so much for me over the years. Uh, some variation of, would you be willing to talk with me and learn more about EXP? And setting appointment. Is that really any different than when you're circle prospecting, calling through your sphere, going through people that you know might sell their house? You're like, well, let me just come over and see the house and talk. I know you guys aren't going to like want to put it on the market tomorrow. Like For those of you that have ever done a two-step listing process, right? the first step is like just get in the door, right? The second step is I'll come back later and get you to sign the paperwork. But the first step is like just get in the door. That's all we're doing here. Just get in the door. Get them on your calendar. Like I know some of you are thinking, man, I don't have like 30 minutes, like with tons of people to watch an EXP video or explain to them. Don't worry, they're but, doing a ton to watch it all at once. But but what do you? But but you'll spend 30 minutes emailing a video out to a bunch of people and none of them will watch it. Why not spend 30 minutes with one person and actually help them understand the model? The, the key here, guys, and like the, the punchline is you've got to make peace with the fact this is a process. You, you have to make peace with that. Just like building your database, your referral partners, your sphere of influence, your A-list, this is a process, it's not something that happens all at once. It never will. For, trust me, I've had people come in, and if it's ever an event, not a process, that event will not last long. It just won't. Mm -hmm. it'll, be, it'll be a one month event, or whatever. Like they will, they guarantee they will get up and leave. So it's a process, not an event. And the sooner you make peace with that, and just realize if it's a process, that means the only thing that I can really control are my activities, which is the only thing I can do to get the outcomes I said I want, now we gotta just focus in on those activities or the steps. Again, we've done this wrong. We have a friend, his name's Bob Sophia. Curtis just met him uh, the last two days. He flew out to Texas this week. He came to our Houston class that we did yesterday. So on Wednesday, he flew from Kentucky out to Houston, right? And uh, he's at EXP already, joined a couple months ago, right? He, he said to me yesterday, I don't know if he said this to you, he said, it was really interesting to watch you guys teach the class because I feel like he I was you. a part of your learning process. He <laughs> was. Because over a year ago, what did you do when, when you first talked to Bob about EXP? I did not do four simple steps. I did 17 really difficult, painful, ineffective steps. <laughs> you sent him a video. I sent him a video. He never watched. I walked around. Now, it turns out that him and I hit it off, and so I, I like to talk to the guy, and we, we get along. But the reality was, what I did is I walked around, and I talked on the phone to him a couple times, 
we kind of did a Zoom once with Curtis and, and me and him, and then um, I doubt he ever really watched the video. And then it was like, then the new baby came, and it's like, it doesn't matter, nothing's happening now. And I just, but then what I am good at, what I always default to is I'm amazing at long-term follow-up. I'll just, I'll just get in there and do, do that work that, that nobody else likes to do. And that he, so he was open. So I had built, over a year, I built a strong enough relationship to when, when we realized this, and guys, our business, our, our rev share business has completely transformed since December. 100% thanks to finally listening to Curtis and to Bigo. Like, that's it. And we started to realize like, okay, it really is this simple. I just was like, who do I need to start over with? Well, Bob's on that list and you can ask him. He actually literally came up to us separately yesterday. He goes, dude, I realize you actually did both. You did the wrong way and then the right way with me and here I am. I think probably if you're being honest with it, we all kind of look at things and go, well, I'm not getting the conversion I want. I probably need another video. I need another, like you guys talk about your website, right? Yeah. Like, oh. You know what? I, I maybe need, I should I need, need a written material. FAQ instead of my video FAQs. Maybe I, yeah, maybe I, I need to, right? We, 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 need, we, we try to overcomplicate it instead of going, well, what did the best people do? And how do we simplify it instead of complicate it? Yep. So Bob's <laughs> got another phone call from you sometime in the last six months to which you reached out and said, hey man, like, I literally, well, I mean, I did all the how's the baby stuff, yeah, send baby gifts, baby all, gifts the, like, all that. You guys, I rock at long term follow up. I beat <laughs> everybody, trust me. And, but what I did do is I finally was like, dang, I got to reset with Bob. So I called Bob and I said, hey, dude, I realized I did you a total disservice. I did not explain the company well. I, I screwed this up totally. If you're still open minded about your business and because and, I know you're not happy with where you're currently at. And you clearly haven't moved. Like, are you open to kind of let me restart with you and Blair, who's his wife? Um, are, you, are you open to that? Like, could I just do a Zoom with both of you guys, just so I could restart? And he goes, Yeah, man, of course. He's like, Just send me your calendar link, and I'll check with her, and, and we'll get on your calendar. But I built the relationship. I moved him from a C to an A in that time. But then the second time through, I did it correctly. What are your thoughts on doing things dating yourself? We're gonna get there. Okay. That's great, great timing. So, great timing that question. perfect. So, he books a time on your calendar, or you set a time with the person, right? right? What, did, what did you do? So, I there? literally said to Bob, like, I just wanna, I feel like I need to be able to present present this to you better. I feel like I'm more equipped to do that now. I just, I did you a disservice last time. So, can we, and so he said yes. So, I got him, and here's the funny thing, is it wasn't just him and Blair, it was also their lead agent, who was really like Bob's partner. And uh, which I wasn't expecting, but I'm like, okay, I can do that. So here, here's the, here's what I said. Here's what I did, I should say. I just, we played a video. I literally played the video that can be found at themodelexplained.com, okay? I didn't present it to him. Now some of you are going, that's weird, you're on Zoom and you played a video? Broccoli, broccoli, <laughs> okay? Just a second, broccoli, it's weird, I know, but so are avatars. Okay, <laughs> right, they are. So I, I said, hey Bob, Blair, it's nice to meet you. DJ, nice to meet you. Here's the deal guys, here's after we kind of set the context. I said, here's what I would like to do if you're open to it. I can sit here and explain this, the company to you. Part of the problem with me is I have ADD and I'm gonna go a hundred different directions. And if you ask me even one question, this might take an hour and a half. <laughs> or I have a good friend, his name is Brent Gove. He's significantly better at presenting than I am. I could play his video, I think it's like 20 minutes. I always underestimate. I'm a realtor, so I round up or down. Um, so I'm like, I think it's like 20 minutes. I mean, I'll stop it at 10 if you hate it, but he's just so much better at presenting than I am. And then that avoids me from having to go, you know, way off script. And then we can just, I can answer your questions if you have any at the end. Is that cool? Guess what? Literally, and I've used that script now, I don't know. 30 times, everybody says yes. Even though it's weird to go, I'm gonna set an appointment with someone over Zoom, it's better in person. In this case, he's in Kentucky, so we're doing it over Zoom. And then I'm gonna just gonna press play on a video. Because that, that's why step three is watch the modelexplained.com. It's not go present the model explained or present the slides, it's watch the modelexplained.com. Now there's a few more reasons which we're gonna get into here in a second, but it, it was that simple. I love it.
So here's why we watch the model. Number one, it's shorter. How many of you have watched that video at least once? Okay. If you haven't, you need to go watch it. If you have, you need to go watch it. Okay. A lot of us think, oh man, Brett goes so good, but you know, I, I think, you know, I could do it a little bit better. Oh, crap. Want, want to hear a, hear a secret? That video you watched, it was actually like four presentations edited into one with Brett wearing the same shirt in the same room. Okay? So I don't care how good you think you are, it's going to be really, really tough to beat that video because of how much time, energy, and effort's gone into it and how great Brett is. Yep. Even if you can get as good as Brett or maybe you're the oddball that's better than Brett, here's the problem when you start filming videos. Ask me how I know this. Two and a half years filming videos, making it hard, having fancy web pages that we sent people to. I would go watch fancy. Okay, yeah, having shitty fun. web pages that we went to, <laughs> having funnels. Here's the problem with all that. You're subconsciously telling the person that you that is watching your video that if they want to be a good recruiter to EXP, they too need to be a good presenter, need to have fancy websites and funnels need to be well spoken, need to understand the exact model, you're subconsciously telling them it's hard. You press play on a video, you just subconsciously told somebody if they wanted to recruit, they could go through this process and do it too. It's big, you guys. Like, it, it may not sound big, it's big. Our friend Adam was uh, sharing a story uh, with us recently that he had, a, uh, he had an agent in uh, Washington that wrote an offer on one of his listings, right? And he had to call the agent and actually tell him that he didn't get it, like, because he had multiple offers, right? That's what so, he asked for. So he calls the guy and, like, gets to know him a little bit and goes, man, dude, I'm real sorry, but my seller didn't accept your offer. But he just starts getting another guy, right? On the phone of telling him, hey, dude, your buyer's offer was denied, not accepted by my seller and I, he sets up a, a meeting. <laughs> right? <laughs> He gets on the meeting, he, he tells the guy, man, I can tell you all about EXP, but I'm long-winded and Adam is just like I am. Hey, uh, let's just go ahead, man, if you don't mind, my friend Brent Gove has this cool video, it's real short and to the point, I'll just press play, we'll watch it together, and throughout the thing I can you know, pause it and interject a little bit here and there and do a little Q&A with you at the end. Okay, cool. The guy at the end goes, what did he say, Kevin? I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Literally, that was the guy's feedback when, when when at, and by the way, this is really important, and this is a little advanced, but we're gonna get there. He's, at the end, the first thing is like, what did you like about that, or what excites you, like you most? the most? About what, you just heard. what excites you about that? What, what, what do you like the most? His answer was, I could do that. I could literally press play for people and recruit them to EXP. Like that's, that, that most people don't, don't get that at the surface level, that's the psychological thing. But it happened to come up to the surface for him instantly. I thought that was amazing. I'm telling you guys, you, you start teaching people this process, they go, I can do that too, right? In the last month or so, <laughs> Nolly stopped doing live trainings inside Mentorship Masters on a weekly basis. Yeah. Some of you guys are bummed. That but you know what? After, that, that was after Curtis. <laughs> but you know what Nolly realized? I did jack crap, huh? <laughs> Nolly realized that subconsciously I'm telling all of you guys that if you start recruiting to EXP, you too have to start training all your people, creating this workplace group, putting on a weekly training, putting out videos. Like it's sending the wrong message to you guys. Because guess what? Like there's already, we're a part of uh, Jake Hinder and Michael Reese's upline and Brent Goves and 50 hours of EXP like training. Every what, single what more week. training do you need? Like, you don't need a weekly round table with Nolly. He's got 5,302 videos. I think I just went up a couple thousand on it. <laughs> like, if you want to know Nolly has to say, he's written nine books about it. Just go read them. Right? You don't need a weekly training with it. It's the same thing, though. We have to be careful what we're teaching people. Do you follow that? Yeah. So that's why we've simplified this and broke this down. I say we, like, we created this. We just, this is Brent Gove's training. We just this really is Brent's. We just told him that it's now, we've taken it from him, we've copyrighted it, it's ours. <laughs> so we talk about it so much, because it's, you guys, it's made that much of a change. My, my group size is nowhere near the size of Curtis's. It's 1,150 people, but 100 of those people are in the last 30 days. Mm. Wow. wow. Do the math on that. I'm not, that. I'm not saying that for applause. Like, think about it, 30, it'll be 36 months this month. So in 35 months, it took to get 90% of what I've got, but in the last 30 days, I got 10%. Like that's, that's, a, that's a shift, that's because I made a shift and a decision six months ago to just follow a process and stop having to be the star about it. And 
like trust me, this is this is the way you build and lead. You guys want a couple pro tips on this real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, those of you that don't close your ears, a couple of you <laughs> said yes. Okay. Yeah. So the modelexplain.com, when you go to that website, there's a download this video link, download the video to your computer. Why? Two reasons. Number one, if you're like our good friend Andrew Franklin. Anybody know Andrew Franklin? Yes. Number one team at EXP here. Realty. They sold 1,600 homes last year. Biggest team we have in the entire company, right? They're in Houston. They're direct to us, right? He, he's been trying to present EXP himself to everybody because he had to get over the fact that, man, I don't want to watch a video. The number one agent in the company who runs the biggest team, right, is now pressing play on the video. But you know what happened to Andrew last week? His internet at his office sucked and his video was buffering. Okay? So one reason you downloaded it is you have bad internet, You're that, right. that's a little bit better, right? The other reason you downloaded it is for me, I think it's a little weird when you set the meeting. It's already weird to say, hey, Kevin, now that I have you on this meeting, instead of me presenting to you about EXP, do you mind if I show you a video? I, mean, I think it's weird to open up your browser and go to a URL that you could have sent the guy already. I just think internally people start going, well, dude, why don't you just send that to me? Right? But if you just pull a, a, a video off your computer, they don't know that the video is housed at themodelexplain.com. Do you find that? A little pro tip on that. So I think download it to your, your computer is better. Get through the buffering. Also, this just mentally helps me. Then I don't feel as weird. I think the other piece there too, if we didn't say it, I want to make sure I'm really clear about it. Yes. Uh, when we set the appointment, it's to, it's to go over the model. It's not to watch a video. I never mention a video until we're face to face, whether that happens to be over Zoom or in person. Okay, so, so wait, so you reached out to Bob and said, hey man, do you want to meet? But you didn't say, do you want to meet so I can show you a video? No, no, I just said, can we meet? I'd like, I'd like to, if you're open-minded about this still, I'd like to. Because it's weird if you ask somebody to watch a video with you. Yeah. It's already weird if you message them to it, you know how much more weird it is? Hey Patrick, want to get on a Zoom with me and watch a video together? <laughs> Woo, that's awesome. Right? Some people might call the cops for that too. You know? <laughs> that's just weird, okay? <laughs> And, and I will tell you, I remember we, we did it with Wendy uh, recently. Like, like we have a friend who's just pretty dominant. She, like, her and her husband are well-known. I'm not going to tell you her name, whatever. But, like, Wendy said to us, she, she was like, when you guys asked me if I, she was in her office, and she goes, when you asked me if it was okay to watch a video, I wanted to tell you no. She said this to us after. She goes, I wanted so bad to be like, no, I don't want to freaking watch a video. I just drove down to your office from 30 minutes away to come talk to you about EXP. But now once the video is over, what did she say? She's like, I see why you did that. That was. That so was I'm really so good. glad you did it that way. Never would have agreed to it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's guys, it's powerful. She, and she's not the first person to say that to us. Nope. But other people go like, I was cringing two minutes in when you said, "Can we watch a video?" But then I'm really glad you played the video because it really it lays it out. It just makes it easier. It just makes this easier. And I'm all about easy. Like if we're going to spend time, if we only have a certain amount of time to dedicate to this, we should probably use the highest and best use of our time for that. And that is not in presenting. Like, it's in following an easier process. Couple more on the pro tip type side. Some of us like to pause the video at a couple points along the way and just be like, oh yeah, I know you just said that we're at 25,000 agents, but we're actually at 55,000 now. This video was recorded last year, so it's a little outdated. It's just kind of fun to be like, this video was recorded last year and we've added 30,000 agents. That's kind of fun to do. So there's a couple points along the way where sometimes I'll pause it, especially on a Zoom. If I'm face to face with somebody, the energy is much stronger, right? Like face to face, there's more of a connection when you're doing this. But if you're on a Zoom watching a video of somebody, it can be a, a, a little bit tough sometimes. So pausing it every once in a while, or if you have somebody that's kind of fading on you, I pause the video then to just kind of interject and get them, get them back in focus. Also, like whether you're on video or you're in person, like you have to demonstrate like the behavior you want from them. If you're on your phone, cause you've already watched this video nine times this week, and you're on your phone checking your emails, guess what they're gonna do? Get on their phone checking emails, or they're just gonna be like, that's pretty freaking rude. He asked me to a Zoom, and then he's not even like, he's not even watching the same thing I am. So I know, yeah, you're gonna have to listen to Brent go, that's terrible, man, you might actually get so good and memorize so many Brent scripts that you'll be even better at recruiting after listening to it. Yesterday, you said our presentation was the best one you've heard in a, in a while. Yeah. Like, like I, why? I think it's because we haven't presented it in a while. Yesterday, we did a lunch and learn right in the middle of this recruiting class. They had guests come in. And so we stopped for an hour in the middle and we actually presented this live. But that was the first time Kevin and I had done it in months. But guess what we've done over the last few months? Watched it. Watched Brent Go's video over and, over and over and over and over and over again. So like you could hear some of like Brent Go coming out and some of the scripting and lines that we use. 
So anyway, pro tip, download it. Pro tip, focus, pay attention, be there, present with the person. Um, also pro tip, as you mentioned, at the end of the video, don't ask what did you think. That's a terrible question and I, I, that's like my default. I always have to stop myself. Don't ask what did you think. What did you like most about what you just heard? Or what gets you most excited about, about, about what you just heard? Right? Find out what the, what the key is. The other problem that comes up a lot if you present EXP or you start telling people all about EXP is you generally share with them all the things that you love about EXP, the reasons you joined, but we don't know if the reasons you joined have anything to do with the reasons they might want to join. Mm -hmm. Do you follow us on that? Yeah. Right? We don't know what their hot button is. I don't know. I think there's probably less than 10 or 20% of agents of EXP that take part in healthcare. And you might rattle on for 20 minutes about healthcare because it saved your family $600 a month. But, or you may not talk about it because you don't know about the EXP agent healthcare program. And that could be a real big hot button in their family because one of the spouses just you know, doesn't have healthcare at work anymore. You follow me on that? So just let the video do, do all that. The other thing too is with the video, it's not, it's not about you now. Like, so yes. if they hate it, cool, the relationship's still tight. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no personal, there's no loss of personal relationship. You don't lose any relationship equity with them at all when someone else does it. Okay, and, the, and the other reason too yeah, like with that is like okay. That. The video. Now let them reject Brent, not you, Dolly. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Right, like that's what they're doing. I that's promise what it feels you, more Brent like. Brent's feelings will not get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. No. The source uh, of the source. I had a yeah. guy tell me to my face, well, over Zoom. That is the stupidest video I've ever watched. He sat there and watched the whole thing. Like he's <laughs> he's the stupidest person I ever met. But, <laughs> but he goes, feelings didn't get hurt, neither did mine, because I'm like, well. Cool. Well, at least he wasn't talking about me. <laughs> I had a lady halfway in, and I could tell she hated it. I made her watch another 10 minutes before I stopped it. I got about two thirds of the way in. But like, I, I, I was like, are, are you okay? Are you, are, you, are you driving with this? Or No, I absolutely would never join. Like, no worries, cool. Like, you could have told me to stop. I mentioned at the beginning, like at the any point you hate what you're hearing, just let me know. I'm not, I'm not here to like, I don't, I'm not, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm not forcing it upon them. I'm just sharing the information with them. Hopefully that frees you up. Like you're just playing a video, you're just sharing information with people. Who can't do that? You also just mentioned, so with number three, there's an or, okay? And the or would be something Fred just mentioned a second ago, which would be a lunch and learn. Or invite them to a lunch and learn. Mm -hmm. But the, here's the point of this, okay? Either way, with the lunch and learn or the modelexplained.com, you are not the presenter in most cases. Or you might be, but in most cases, we're the inviter. And it, that makes it a whole lot easier. And okay, at a lunch, it's the same thing. Like someone's gonna present it all the way through. And hopefully they're good at it. Probably not as good as we go, some of them maybe. But the point is, it's still not you and you're still not just spewing at them how great EXP is. They're gonna get a top to bottom overview of EXP. And then if you're doing your job, which is paying attention and tuning in to what it is that they're tuned into, now you got the hot buttons and you know how to go on in this process. Yep. Now how do you go from three to four? Well, one of the things that Kevin's really good at is he always says, I want to leave people wanting more, not answering all their questions. So be really careful after you watch the video to not necessarily say what excited you most or what you like the most, and then say, do you have any questions? And just start answering every question for them. Like, it's kind of natural we want to do that. The problem with that is, first of all, it becomes hard to book these, because in my calendar, I try to only book 30, 45 minutes for this internally. I might tell them it's 15 or 20, like you said, but in my own calendar, I'm booking 30 or 45. But the problem is, like, if I just answer all their questions, then then I don't have any place to take them. You see what I'm saying? It's, if I answer all the questions, then my next question is, cool, you're ready to sign up. And if the answer is no, then where do I go? The loop's closed. The loop's closed, right? So keep the loop open. Like, what'd you like most about it? Cool. This is an Adam Coates question. Adam's in Washington with us at EXP. Adam likes to say, hey, on, on a scale of one to 10, Kevin, with you know one being you hated it, obviously like never come to EXP, <laughs> 10 being like, man, how do I sign up? Like, where, where are you at right now? Like, what, like, how much did you like it? So if Adam gets a seven, an eight, a nine, so most people are gonna give you tens. Most people also are gonna give you one or twos. But if Adam gets a seven, eight, or nine, you know what he does? Awesome, you know, our, the next thing I would love to do then is I'd love to introduce you to one of my business partners at EXP. Like, I think I might be able to get like maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes on, on Nolly Williams' calendar 
on Kevin Kaufman's calendar, on Curtis Johnson's calendar. I'd love to introduce him to you because one of the things, you probably heard it in the Brent Go video and stuff, but we're all about collaboration at eXp. Like eXp is more than just what you get from the brokerage. It's about the people you get to collaborate and hang around and learn from. And I'd love to introduce you to my business partner. This is another subconscious thing, just like pressing play on a video is, is if we tell them, if they even watch Brent Go tell them about how collaborative this company is, and then we are the only ones that they talk to to get all of their questions answered, we're gonna sort, that's not very collaborative. Mm -hmm. Like we can, we're saying one thing, but we're demonstrating something else. And that psychologically, that doesn't line up. So what we want, again guys, we, we're, we're committed, we've surrendered to the fact that this is a process, not an event. That means the next step in this process is to get them into <clears throat> some sort of collaborative environment so they can experience it not just here, because you can know about something, but when you really know it, it's usually because you've experienced it, right? You didn't read the Disneyland notes, you went to Disneyland, which is why you know what Disneyland is like. You just say you're gonna take your kids to Disneyland? Not, a, not a freaking chance. <laughs> Kevin's kids don't know what Disney is. He's how, like how somehow. Time between three and four. What are you trying? I to want as short as time as possible, but real yeah. life pops up. I put short as time as possible. Like, I think about it this way. I've got a seller on the line. Do I want that appointment tomorrow? No, no, but trying to get on your calendar or Curtis's oh, calendar or Nolly's on calendar. The, okay, good question. So while I'm in this meeting right here and okay. we just got done watching the video and I just said, hey, what'd you like best about it? Hey, on a scale of one to 10, right there, I'm, and if I'm introducing that I'd like to get my partner, I'm pulling up my business partner's calendar. Guys, I've got, okay. I'll save on my phone and on my, on my browser, I have obviously my calendar, Fred's calendar link, Curtis's calendar link, and Jay Kinder's calendar link. And I pull them up right then and there while I'm on with them for whoever, if I'm setting it with Fred or if I'm setting it with Curtis or Jay, or who I'm setting it right then and there and I've already got it saved. So I can, I, I can either pick through who it just should be next, which in a lot of cases is Fred or Curtis, or I might just go, well, dude, Jay's actually got the first availability, so I'm gonna ask Jay to, to handle this one. Right, but the point is, I'm like the best possible, and we screwed this up too. Like, trust me, leaving this first Zoom with the next one scheduled is always the best bet. Yeah, you it's don't, always the best bet. You don't leave the seller's house in a two-step listing process after you walk through and saw it, and, and say, "Hey, cool, I'm gonna come back with comps, and we can go through the paperwork and talk about my fees and the other questions." You don't leave that initial, right? For so those of you that have done a two-step listing, you don't leave the initial listing appointment after doing all that work and say, cool, I'll reach back out to you tomorrow. We'll figure out when we're gonna meet next. You're right on the spot say, hey, cool. So how's Saturday morning at 10 look, right? That type of thing. Dolly and I think it's, it's so important too that we have Calendly. Yeah. Uh, What's you it know, Calendly. Calendly. So Artemis just got his Calendly uh, this week after, <laughs> And, and you guys badgered me about Calendly for, I don't know how long. Because dude, to text you and to coordinate through four different text chains. So, so with a, a tool like Calendly, and there's others, um, you can go in and you can see when my calendar's free. And then you just book it and there's no going back and forth like, hey, Dolly, do you have this open or do you have that? Can you do? And then you're right there with them so you so it's easy. It's like, hey, could you do Tuesday at three or is Thursday at four better? And they tell you Tuesday, you book it. No. The other thing I love about Calendly is like time zone support is built in. So if they're not in the same place as you, it doesn't matter. Like you can look at it based on whatever time zone you want, you're in. So you can yeah. move it to whatever day. Curtis had a question too. Or no, I'm gonna come back to Nolly too. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say exactly with that. And uh, one of the cool things that you guys do um, is, you know, like also see stuff pop up my calendar. On a lot of times, people are like, hey, can you know, do this, whatever. And I get on kind of blind in some cases, right? Like, okay, we're trying to dissect it. I know we're gonna go over that. But one of the good things, like, even before I get the email, like, hey, can you, you know, this is in your calendar or whatever, um, you know, Kevin or Fred, whatever, I'll get a thing in my Facebook Messenger going, dude, I'm so excited for you to meet so-and-so. Here's all the cool, and like, I get done with it, and I'm like, well, let's go now. Like, I, I get all jacked up. I get excited <laughs> to get on it, because they pre-sell me, and so I can't wait to meet them. And that's a big deal. Yeah, that is a big deal. So Nolly, I know more than half the room's mentorship masters. Can you, do you want to give the, the website that you have sort of dedicated to yeah. how to get to your calendar and who to schedule with? Or yeah. do you want to send that out later? Or yeah, go ahead so and talk we'll, to that. We'll do it right now. So it's nolly.com slash three-way. Three-W-A-Y. 
Did I get flagged by the bounty.com slash three WA internet police? And it, it's important to remember that who actually does the three way? I mean, it's important that they have a great breadth of knowledge about EHP, but it doesn't really matter who it is. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, oh, I've got, I've got to have Curtis do this one. I mean, in some cases, it does matter if they have a team of 20 people to protect. But in most cases, it, it, it's just them having a different if, experience. If you're intently listening, and going back to that definition of what a recruiter is, yeah. to find out how you can position as the resource, then you should, you'll know right away who, who the next call should be with. And theoretically, it's gonna be with your immediate sponsor. And again, like, I've got friends, and if friends not available, then I've got Curtis's link, and if Curtis is available, I've got Jay's, or whatever the case is, right? I'm gonna have multiple options just in case, but like if the, if the question, if I know that their big deal is like, they're struggling growing through a team, like the way I'm gonna present it is gonna be around Fred's knowledge about a team or Curtis's knowledge about a team. Or if they really cued in on the rev share piece and starting to, to get, out, get out of the daily grind, like it's really easy for me to sell them on a meeting with Curtis. Going, going along with this, the culture in EXP is collaborative, but this isn't just about who's gonna get something from you. There's people outside of my group that I've gone mm -hmm. to and said, hey, yep. can you do this? Um, and Elizabeth, we were talking a little a bit ago, it's like, you know, she's set the top of the food chain, if you will, right? She yeah. got in, she took all the arrows for us. Is that sometimes there isn't people above, and I would just say, it's, it, sometimes it might be someone you brought in, right? You guys have done three-way three -way calls and Zooms that you guys had no Absolutely. financial impact, right? You weren't gonna be done with this, and, and I've done things for Jay and, and even done things for Brent. Like, hey, can you help me with this? That wasn't gonna go into me, it was gonna go into them. And I, that, I, could, I, I love that. I can't wait to do things like that. So it's not always up, but sometimes it's people that you've already brought in that might be a good fit. So we need to think outside of just <coughs> who's gonna be compensated every closing on this. We're all, we're all owners in this company. We all want it to work. You can reach outside and people love to give. And we've got a giving culture. Three months ago, I went to okay. Gove for, for, for one. Was that? Three months ago, I went to Gove. Cause I, I was like, this, this, this requires the, the cannon. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he literally, so we got on first. And he's like, dude, I'm so freaking pumped up about, I've been waiting for two and a half years for you guys to ask me for my help. I cannot wait to help yeah. you with this person. I understand and he like freaking meant it. Gove's eighth level. Yeah. Like it doesn't, you know. Like I'm, it doesn't even benefit Gove. You don't do that for me though too. Absolutely. Um, I'm doing it again. Today's the first time I've met them face to face. Mm -hmm. oh, well. And I didn't even know them. And a big team that I had coming on, they knew your name because Gary Keller was trying to get the team. <laughs> and they kept saying, well, look at, and they mentioned your name. And it was awesome. But I mean, remember I reached out to y'all. I was like, we don't know each other. We're not on the same lines. And you guys help and you talk to them. You guys spend your time talking to them. Yeah. So it's, it's powerful. Andrew Frankel reached out to us because they had a husband and wife team. Yeah, yeah. We jumped on a call with him. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Andrew. Didn't Andrew, didn't you guys meet with Andrew when the yeah. in Vegas? Yeah. 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 Well, we ended up at an event. Yeah. So Wait, you made a big decision at an event? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. You were sitting out of here. Yeah. You were sitting out of here. I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. We signed at an event. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the food court. <laughs> so one other thing here, um, especially like if you were to ever ask like Elizabeth to get on a Zoom or Curtis or some of these people that are like, like they've been at the company, they have some big results, right? Like make it sound as special as it really is. Like even though Curtis and I are close and we have a joking relationship and stuff, one of the things that I messed up on early on is like, I would just be like, yeah, I'll get you on the business, like my business partner Curtis, right? But it's like, no, like. My business partner, Curtis, like has grown the biggest revenue share group of anybody that's joined the company in the last 40 months. Like if I could get 10 minutes of his time, maybe, maybe five, 10, 15 minutes of his time, like would you be willing to hop on a, a, another Zoom and I can introduce you to him, right? Like make Curtis sound as special as he is when you're, when you're selling this, right? Like, cause that's part of it as well. Like, first of all, like we are an awesome company. The collaboration is great, but like, if you're just like, yeah, well, yeah, somebody taught me the next thing I need to do is I need to put you on with Kevin. Like, <laughs> like you have to sell it a little bit here too. Like I'm not saying like you gotta embellish the truth, but like make, make it sound important. Like Nolly's time's important. Like you guys, like maybe you guys don't know this about Nolly. I always give him a like, joke around about this too, but I don't know if it's still on his website, but at one time, like Nolly, people reach out to him all the time. He's written books, he's got videos everywhere, right? And they want his time. 
So not only be like, awesome, man, like, uh, here, here's a link to, to my site where I do some coaching or, well, hey, man, Nolly, can I fly out to Austin and hang out with you? Yeah, yeah Nolly has, like, a, how much it costs to take him out to lunch. Like, <laughs> you have to buy him lunch? It's five grand plus lunch. You have to buy him lunch and five grand. No, but I'm serious about that for a second. Like, like <laughs> Nolly's time is valuable, so sell it that way. Like, dude, this guy used to charge five grand just for me to go to lunch with him, but now I can get him on a call with you for 10 or 15 minutes. Slash coach. <laughs> you guys think I'm kidding right now? He legitimately has that. It's only 3500 for one <laughs> But why would Nolly do that? Because Nolly's such a nice guy that he'll say yes to everybody, including people that don't want to give. They're just takers. And so Nolly's got some standards. Like, hey, my time's valuable, right? But in this model, like, we all get Nolly's time and we don't have to pay a dollar for it. But we should make it sound as special and important as it is. Like, the guy knows something. Anyhow, okay. So, have we beat this to death enough? I think we have. Yes? So, if you ask them on a one to ten and they give you like a four or five, is there, yeah. is there something between three and four? Did you like anything about it? No, your time. Here's, here's, look, your time. Seriously, I know, it's, I know you didn't love it, clearly. You gave it a four, but like if you had to, like under your head, say something that you like the most about it, what would it be? The stock piece sounded cool to you. What's important to you about that? Well, that, that I might have something, you know, I close a deal and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's the next thing? I'm constantly trying to, having to hustle and the thought that maybe there's a little something in the future that's growing. It's funny you mention that because that was super important to me coming in too. And uh, I actually had somebody share that with me. If you want, I mean, I don't know if he's available or not. It's kind of, he's, he's super busy, but I can see if I can get on Fred's calendar. Fred is my business partner. He he's the one that kind of showed me about the about the stock piece and how it could you know multiply over time and impact just by doing what we're already doing. If you want to take five or ten minutes, I'm sure I could get him to, to probably work us in. You want me to see? Yes. <laughs> that was great. Guys, at the end of the day, whether we're overcoming objections like that or something else, it's all about just trying to stay in that conversation. With John Chef, I always taught it as like stay in the box. But if they're like, I hate it, cool, like, cool, I get it, you hate it, you should stay at Caldwell Baker forever. Like, that's a brand new line. But, like, who do you know that this might, who might like this? Yeah. I mean, you can always turn a bad client into a referral partner. Sometimes people rate it low because they don't understand it still, too, right? And I think Kevin's script was perfect, but... My, I In probably, perfect scenario, like, I probably would have. I probably would have been more like, well, what, like, what didn't it have? Like, what would have made it a seven or eight or nine for you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hear. Anything. You know, well, my my team, like, they're not going to all want to be on sixteen thousand dollars caps. Oh, I, I see. I didn't know you had. A team. That would be my fault in that case. But I didn't know you had a team. Yeah, Brent doesn't talk about the team plans at EXP, but can I share those with you? Could we book another call and I can tell you more about our team plans, right? Sometimes they just don't know the information. So it's a 35 minute video. Like at the end of the day, you, you can't pack everything in about EXP in 35 minutes. So that's another option too, yeah. is just realizing that maybe there was something there they were looking for that's not there. Either way, both answers, while wildly different, are about staying in that conversation. Stay in there. Yeah. You just gotta stay in that box. That's just stay in the box with them. Well, I was just gonna say, like, if that happened, then you would, and you were gonna put her on three way with Fred, you'd wanna tell him in the, before the call, hey, she's really interested in stuff. Yep. Let's make it mostly about stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. When you when you book on like our Calendly too, it says like, what, why are we talking? What do, what do we need to focus on? Like that because that goes right into my calendar. That way, when I pull it up, I'm like sort of like Curtis. Like I try to send him a message if I'm going to get somebody on a Zoom with him. That way, he knows what to expect or what to bring. So we're gonna we're gonna deep dive on, on step yep. four here, where that really is important, Patrick. Cool. All right. <clears throat> that was pretty good. We taught that way better today than we did yesterday. Sounds good. Yep. Better every day. It's better every day. All right. Let's go to step four. So once you book that call, uh, nolly.com slash three-way. So like on there, you have somebody on your staff, payroll, whatever you want to call it, who does a lot of your three-ways. You also get on three-ways yourself, right? And so this is the process by which if you want Nolly's time, you got to learn this process. <clears throat> I love my buddy Will right here. I love him. We've been on a couple Zooms though, and he doesn't know this process. <laughs> <laughs> so him and I are gonna get really, really good at this right now. So our Zooms can be that much better. I'm being real, like I'm giving a hard time. No, we, but we've never sat this. down and, and done this. Hold him to this. I was on the Zoom with the two of them. I know what you said. Yeah, right? right? But like, I'm telling you, there's an art to this right here. 
And the problem is that... Let's just make them easy. This is, we're just, yeah. We know it's process. We might make it an easy process. <laughs> no, you're saying oops, but here's the deal. For two and a half years, I got Curtis on Zoom we, oops too. with Don't people worry. that I didn't even watch the model explain. And so like, like I'm, I'm like, hey, this is Curtis. And they're asking him questions like, what's the split? Oh, and so, I love those calls. Uh, yeah. Say no one ever. Yeah. So yeah. Under, understand, you you want to get on a freeway with this, you got to follow steps one, two, and three, right? Like you have, they have to watch the model explain. You have to set it up right. And now we're going to talk about what's the perfect. How do you run this super well? And again, we didn't create this either. We just borrowed this from our friend Casey. All right. So I'll be I'll be the current EXP agent or the junior partner. You be the senior partner. Okay. And. Uh, well, yeah. you, you could be the prospect, okay? So um, this is good. We're gonna learn together. Okay? This is also in your book, so you can find it yeah. right after you've your got these slides here in your book. And we're gonna here we go. We're literally gonna go through these steps, guys. And I want to be really clear. The way we like to do this, we schedule these for thirty minutes. They might only take fifteen. Or forty-five. But here's the, but here's the deal. Guys, Tell you why we don't like forty-five minutes. This is a process, not an event. A process that we know based on research. Takes about 14 interactions for someone to make a big move. Okay, a big, like that's just that's just what it takes for someone who does something on average to make a move. It's 14 interactions. So believe it or not, we actually want our interactions to be shorter and more frequent, so we can get through this process faster. We'll give you a tip for that. That's actually part of the bonus uh, uh, step. So all right, so we're gonna do 30 minutes, right? And I might have even sold it to Will as like a couple minutes, as 10 or 15, but. For the sake of this, um, we're gonna we're gonna presume I sold it as thirty minute meetings. That's what I put on his calendar and mine. So we're gonna get all get on Zoom, and I'm gonna say, Will, thanks a lot for being here. Um, I'm I'm excited for this call, Fred. Thanks for being here. Will, really quickly before we get going, I know we set aside thirty minutes. I think it's two o'clock right now. Are you still good till two thirty? Yeah, sounds good. All right, you're good. You're good till two thirty. So first thing I did, guys, I just cleared the time. I clear because if he will goes, dude, no. Unfortunately, I gotta pick my daughter up from school in 10 minutes. Like, first of all, if it's only 10 minutes, I'm probably just gonna, like, I'm gonna take the 10 minutes to reschedule right. a call. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he only has 15 or 20, and I might be able to dig in. Now, if I know Will, if I've done my job as the junior partner, I might know whether or not that's enough time, okay? In this scenario, Will's got the time, so I've cleared the time. I'm making a commitment to him, and I'm gonna keep it. So, psychologically, he's gonna know that. Just like when you tell a seller you're gonna send over a pre-listing package and it actually shows up, psychologically you made a commitment to them and then you kept it. Step two is now I'm gonna set the context, right? This is, we're one minute, maybe 90 seconds in at this point. For some of you, you talk a lot and that's difficult. Me too, Fred too, okay? But we're like 90 seconds in, two minutes max. So we're gonna talk about now why are we here? What's the purpose of this call, right? We're gonna talk about, uh, this I'm gonna say, Will is a friend of mine, and we're doing some uh, some further digging, exploring this company, and I know Fred is such a great, valuable uh, resource, I wanna be able to set you guys up. So I'm gonna set the context, so that way Will can do his due diligence. Gotta bring everybody into the room. Nolly yeah. did it this morning, e even here in this room, not on a three-way call, like, we did it. We were like, hey guys, today we're not gonna talk about selling real estate. Nolly said it, I said it, Curtis came up and said it. We're gonna talk about how to grow residual income, right? But you gotta bring people into the room. One of the things that like we failed on so often is like not we just hop in and assume that everybody is in the same mental state that we are and they know why they're there for that meeting. You ever been in one of those meetings where you're half an hour into it and you're like, like oh why God. are we all why, here? Why, why, There's like yeah. nine different agendas going on. You gotta not only clear the time, but then set the context. It's just real quick. Hey, I got all this here because I want to introduce you to so and so. Like, want to make sure you had it, got to meet Fred and got to also, you know, get any EXP questions answered that you had. Just all right, set the context. So that's step two. We're ninety seconds to two minutes in. Step three. The most important person on that Zoom or in the room is Will. He's the prospect. This is where I take up to one minute to edify him. Up to one minute. <laughs> that is really challenging for a lot of us in sales to only talk for a minute. But I'm gonna say, all right, so as we get started, let me, let me make a quick introduction. Fred, I wanted to introduce you to Will. One of, what I like most about Will, what I respect about Will and his business, <clears throat> what I respect about Will and Deb is in their business, they've, they've been successful, they've run an independent brokerage, and now they're really not just thinking about themselves in retirement, but the people that have trusted them with his leadership 
to, to lead them into the future. And so he's really interested in what EXP has to offer from a retirement standpoint. He really likes the stocks and he really likes the um, whatever, right? I'm not gonna go too much into that. I'm just gonna quickly edify him. He's a big producer, guy, everyone knows him. That's it, one minute or less, hopefully. Write down the words, what I like, what I respect, what I admire. Use one of those statements. I'm not saying you can't say, hey, Will's in, in Texas and you know he runs an independent broker for seven people. That's okay, like a couple little one-liners, but what I most admire about Will is, what I most like about Will is, what I most respect about Will. Will's feeling really good right about then if you can if you can nail one of those statements. And it should be genuine and authentic. This isn't like fluff them up. Like if you don't know the person that you're putting on a three-way call, then you probably shouldn't be getting on a three-way call. Even if it's somebody you don't know that well, like do your research in advance, Stalk right? Them. You, you, Stalk them, get to know them, find out what, what their interest is. But it, it's, again, you just wanna make well feel important. And those words, what I like, what I admire, what I respect, those are really solid words when you're introducing the most important person on the meeting. So now, okay, now we're like three minutes in, guys, right? If we're, if we're doing math here, we're like three minutes in. Now I'm gonna quickly edify the, the senior partner. I'm gonna hopefully take now 30 seconds or less. Definitely less time than I took for Will, because Will is the most important person on this call, not for me and not Fred. However, this and this is the tricky part, guys. This, this can make or break a, a call. If I don't edify Fred well enough or at all, Will has no reason to respect Fred and what Fred has to say. So I've gotta make Will feel special for, ha for getting to be on a call with Fred without making Will feel less than. He's got that? Mm -hmm. And Fred can't do it himself, because otherwise Fred comes off as a pompous jerk. So I've got to do that as the junior partner, and it's got to be short, quick, to the point. And so if you don't know the person, the senior partner, when you're doing one of these calls, you better figure out what it is you really like and respect about that person too, if you can't do it from the heart in 30 seconds. <coughs> so. Uh, Will, I want to introduce you to my business partner, Fred. We have been partners for 13 years. What I respect about him the most is how steady he is and what a great leader he has been for the people in his organization. I think you're going to get a lot out of him. I know you've got a lot of questions. Fred leads a team that has sold literally 5,000 houses in the last decade. Um, he's won every award there is to have, and truthfully, he's having more fun now than he ever has. I think you're going to get a lot out of this conversation. That's it. I just edified him, and, I, and then I stopped. That's it. Like step five here, by the way, I'm now three and a half or four minutes in. I'm actually done talking. I no longer speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> done. Done so. Yeah. Um, this can go really, really bad uh, without giving away the guy's name because he's a really nice guy, but he just doesn't know us. Uh, there's a gentleman in Colorado that was trying to do a three-way call with our friend in Colorado, Aaron Lebovic, who a lot of people, a couple people in this room know, <coughs> and Aaron wasn't available. So he like sort of frantically one day texted Kevin, and I'm like, hey, is anybody available at this time? Like, I told this guy somebody would be there to talk, and he, he screwed the whole process up, right? He didn't ask us in advance if the time was right or looking on our calendars, but we moved things around and we're there. But So Kevin gets on the call with this gentleman, and of course he doesn't know any of this, right? Which that's fine, that's gonna happen sometimes. He doesn't know any of it. But he also doesn't know anything about Kevin. He knows Aaron, who we brought into EXP, but he doesn't know Kevin. So he brings a prospect, the most important person, onto the phone who, I don't know, sells 15 to 20 houses a year. A good, a, well, and in a this good case, agent. He's, he's a good agent and he, like, not only did I think he was the most important person on the phone, he also thought he was the most important yeah. person on the phone. <laughs> but the guy had zero context that Kevin might have sold a few more than 15 to 20 houses in the last year, might know a little bit more about running a team, scaling, growing, leveraging, might have been in the business a decade longer than this guy has, right? Might know a few more things about real estate. I'm not, that's not about like a competition, but like the guy just doesn't know. So the prospect's now on the phone, basically like, and he, there's no respect for Kevin, is all I'm trying to say because the gentleman in Colorado at EXP that set the call doesn't know anything about Kevin, so he's not able to edify Kevin, therefore the call is like kind of a bust from the beginning. Like why are you having it if there's not somebody that you can edify and then kind of like, you know, speak in a little higher manner or at least introduce to for collaboration? Like you can't collaborate with somebody you don't know. Does that make sense? So it's probably better if I actually shared the full story of his name and all the bad things that were said on that call, but I would protect the person. But it was just, I remember you getting off that call and going, that was the worst three-way call I've ever had in my life. 
<laughs> and it sure was. was. He didn't mean it. He was, it was, it was, no, there was no ill intention. Yeah, it wasn't like trying to waste your time. It was just the worst three-way call we've ever had in our life. And it sticks with me to this day for how bad those can go. Hey, pro tip. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a little bio yeah. to say oh, yeah. what you just said about him? Because yeah. I, I'm going to say something for Patrick about you guys. These guys are just dope. These guys are yeah. badass. I mean, I'm talking so, my way, but... So just yesterday, you got that upline graphic that Nolly did. <clears throat> That's got a couple bullet points on it. I think you could use that, like, yeah. if you want. Um, but you can also just message us and say, hey, how do you, like... like I mean, what's a quick intro? What's a quick, quick way to introduce yeah, okay. you? Like, here's what I respect about you guys, but, like, what are the three or four things that you think might be valuable for my prospect to, to know? Right, okay, good. The thing is, I think it's got to come from you. Right. Oh yeah. Right. It does. So yeah, get a bio or, or, or bullet points and then put it in your own words. <clears throat> right. Absolutely. Yeah. And also put it in context for the for the uh, yeah. prospect. Yeah, because if the prospect you're bringing on like owns a franchise or an independent brokerage right. or is trying it's to grow and scale his team, then you bring that out. If the guy really like he needs education, then you bring out the fact that Kevin runs a podcast <laughs> and interviews you know, popular important people in the real estate industry every week, right? Like, yeah, what, whatever, you know, you kind of pick and choose from what's going to fit the person that you're bringing onto the call with the person you, who's also the senior partner. So at this point, we're four minutes into the call, maybe five, and we've only got 25 minutes left. Now is, now is when we go to work. And I've literally, I've, I've, I've done the edification of both of them, and this is where Fred, as the senior partner, takes over and starts to build their core and gather an agenda. Yeah, Will, man, so great to meet you. Uh, I appreciate Kevin saying all those awesome things about you, man. I'm looking forward to meeting you uh, more. Um, whatever, there I might, I, it depends on the person, right? I'm kind of reading it at that time. If, if Will's a, a, a high D, I'm probably just getting right into gathering the agenda, right? If you guys know anything about the disc. Like, if this is a driver, like, let's just go right to the agenda. That's why he's here. He has some questions he wants to ask. If I'm feeling like, you know, we got to warm Will up a little bit or the whole intro didn't go down as great as possible, like, hey, man, you're, you know, you live a little outside of Austin, like, you know, I, man, where are you from, right? So I may just, just kind of get to know him a little bit more. Tell me more about your independent brokerage how long you guys been running that, right? Like, I may ask a question or two, but I'm just building a tiny bit more rapport now as a senior partner with the person that's the prospect, the most important person on the call. And then I, at some point, I'm just going to say, hey, hey, Will, man, I, I don't have a big agenda here today, man. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you may have, offer some feedback or advice or share some experiences with you that I've had over the last three years at eXp Realty. What would you like to talk about, man? If, if you don't mind, I'm going to grab a pen and a piece of paper and let's build a little agenda. Do you have some questions for me? What would you like to chat about? Yeah, you know, the... Going from an independent to EXP, that kind of sucks. Cool, all right, so we wanna talk about like how do you make the transition from independent to EXP. What else? Building a team. Cool, talk about building a team. Okay, what else, right? So I'm just gonna keep doing, I'm gonna do that now. Here's, this is so hard for me, you guys, because what happens is a lot of these turn conversational pretty quickly as you build rapport, and so like Will goes, yeah, I'm a little concerned about the transition, right? And then he just keeps like, keeps talking or I want to jump in. I want to be like, oh man, yeah, lots of people, like I want to just immediately go answer his question, right? The first thing he says, you don't want to do that. You want to build the agenda. What else? What else? Write the things down. What else? Sometimes you have to even stop. Hey, hey Will, hold on real quick, man. I want to build the agenda just because if you don't mind, man, I've been on a lot of these calls and sometimes what happens is like, I start talking for 10 minutes on the first thing you said and then we get to the end of the call and I find out that maybe there was something you really want to talk more about but I never I never learned about it so what, what else man like is there anything else besides that one thing you want to talk about right so then I just kind of kind of bring them back right and again this is me as a senior partner I'm trying to build a list and what you'll find as you do this a lot is that the first thing that comes out of people's mind the first question is not always the biggest reason it's always the biggest thing right like Will's not leading with well, hey man, like if I shut down my brokerage, like uh, what are they gonna, what's EXP gonna do for me financially? Cause I, got, I still got X, Y, and Z bills. Like he may not lead with that. He may lead with like, hey, you've run a large team. What have the agents most, you know, on your team liked about EXP, right? He throws me a softball. So I wanna, again, build an agenda. And then as the senior partner, discuss agenda items number seven, I now get to go, cool, we've been talking for 10 minutes internally. We've been talking for 10 minutes, like about, 18 minutes left, give myself two minutes at the end to, to do the next steps thing. So cool, all right, well, it seemed like it, you had the most energy or you're kind of most excited to talk about that item and I just start there, does that make sense? So I build my agenda, I get my three, four, five, six things he wants to talk about 
and then the senior partner takes over. And I'm not gonna go through some of the things that we necessarily do, but for those of you that have been on enough three-way calls, like you've seen me share my screen, you've seen me you know, reference a story about other people, the best way to learn about eXp and getting really good at this is to set meetings. Mm -hmm. like in the video that we talked about early, earlier today, Casey Council, like she actually says to her group, I can't, like, I can't help you recruit except for being on a, a three-way call together. This is the only way I can help you get better. I can't coach you into it. You've got to be on, we've got to be on these calls. You've got to have some at-bats. This is the absolute best way to get great at it. Yep. So then anyway, I go through my agenda items. I like to share experiences. I like to share my screen, let people see stuff instead of just talking about it. And then what's, what's our last final step? All right, final step, guys. We're going to ask for the next step. <laughs> Again, we've resigned to the fact this is a process, not an event. And then in a process, unless Will's going, dude, I'm ready to join. They're never saying that on that call, trust me. Like, what's the next step? The goal of every single step is the next step. Until they say yes. Like, that's it. Like, so our goal now is to set something specific and in your handout, next steps. And we're gonna ask for a specific date, time, or a certain way to follow up. <clears throat> we're gonna give a couple options. Introduce them to someone else. You know what, Will, I'm so glad you got the chance to meet Fred. Sounded too like you're also interested in what it was like from the independent brokerage world now being a part of someone else's bigger brand. And you know, my partner Curtis Johnson went through the same thing. He's thriving in this world now. Perhaps it'd be valuable to that. So like I'm finding someone else to set an appointment with. I don't know that unless I'm listening intently on that call. Um, might offer them an experience of, I don't know, EXP world or uh, the, I don't know, shareholder summit or EXP con. But whatever's coming up, right? I'm gonna offer them an experience or give them something to look at together. Maybe he showed interest in that call on going to an icon series class. And so we're making an appointment, like I literally just pull up the calendar, we pick out a class that Nolly's teaching next week, and we both, both of our avatars walk into the auditorium at the same time next week. But we're setting a specific appointment for a follow-up for, again, that next step. And I don't wanna, I'm not saying that we haven't done this, I'm just saying the way for the best the best chance of success is to set the next appointment while you're on this appointment. Yeah, we reach out to set an appointment. At this appointment, we set another appointment. At the end of this appointment, we set another appointment. Like this is just sales and, and the sales process, right? Like you mentioned earlier, like there's probably 14, 16, whatever it is, interactions or something that go on in between people making the decision to move over. So we just gotta keep setting the next appointment. Now every appointment doesn't need to be 30 minutes. I wanna say that as well, right? Like sometimes it's like, hey man, I wanna, um, I know we're, we're out of time today, right at the end of, of one of these. Like I, I'd love to show you, you mentioned our technology. I'd love to do a quick demo for you of our marketing center, show you our workplace, show you EXP world, and you know, show you KB Core real quick. I think we could do that in like five or 10 minutes next week. How about Tuesday at 9.15? Whatever, right? And so, like, I'm just leaving that appointment, setting another one. Yeah, Curtis. Sorry, I was stretching. No, oh, I'm on point. Yeah, okay. Right. And then let me let me say one more thing. I'll get I'll get to your question too. Um, the other thing I wanted to say that we kind of forgot here is when when Kevin, the junior partner that brought Will to the meeting, passes it over to me as the senior partner. Kevin shuts the hell up. I said that. You did. Like yep. four yeah, times. He did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, here's the problem with it, and Casey's really Casey's really good at uh, at, at bringing this out. Yeah. The problem is that if we're both talking, and this has happened on Zooms, you, me, and Dolly have done. Like Dolly brought somebody on, and he had you and me talk to him, and it was like three on one, dude. Yeah. So like Casey used the example of like you're playing tennis, it's like singles versus doubles, except. And a Zoom that you and Nolly and I had, there was three of us on one side of the net doing this. And that dude's back there, like, like, right, like trying to react to three of us lobbing, like, not lobbing, but like smashing tennis balls at him over the net. So, like, think of that picture for a minute, like the feeling that the prospect gets when there's three people playing three on one or two on one. So, it's not that you don't have anything good to say. Don't misunderstand us on that. That's not what it's about. You got to say the cool things in, in this step. You're gonna to get to do some follow-up and say some cool things. You're gonna be a part of other three ways. The problem is that if you're both talking, you're double teaming. You're playing two on one and it doesn't work. It feels really awkward for the person. Are you stretching again? No, nope, I actually got something on this. So I, I would say you guys are nailing this in a couple of different things, right? We've gotta duplicate. So we gotta think from a process standpoint, you're learning this and you need to learn it for you. But then what else? You need to learn this because now you need to go teach this to your tribe. 
much, mm -hmm. right? So when you're looking at this, don't just look at this like, okay, I gotta learn this. You've gotta duplicate. You've gotta go now teach everybody else how, not just how you introduce people to knowing, right? Or <laughs> Kevin or Fred, but how someone's gonna introduce you on your three-way calls, okay? It's super important. You've gotta understand that from how you do it, but then how someone also introduces you. And then the other thing is when they turn the time over, right, you need to shut up. And it doesn't make you less than. It just means that, so I've obviously probably done as many as anybody else, or right up there, right? Um, with some of the biggest teams and the biggest players in the industry coming over and doing that. Um, and it doesn't make you less than to be quiet and just to learn, because the more you're on it, the more you're gonna learn, you're gonna pick up. But there's a strategy, right? When I would introduce Jay Kinder or whatever, he'd go through, I'd be like, wow, and like, I, don't, I like to talk. I'm like, I want to interrupt, but I'm like, okay, just shut up. Because he'd ask questions that I'm like, oh, I can add to this. It doesn't matter if I can add to it. I mess up his flow, Yeah. right? Like he understands where he's going. And if I do it, all of a sudden he's got to go, okay, now I got to react to that. Now I got to get back on point. So it doesn't mean that you can't add value, but there's a, like when I'm walking someone through this and you add stuff to it, it might be great, but now it messes me up. Cause now I got to go solve your problem and then I gotta take them back this whole way and I've got a limited amount of time. So, but what I like to do is I wanna make sure that the relationship is there. So a lot of times I'll be like, yeah, you know what, Fred's excellent at this or whatever, right? And a lesser person that maybe hasn't done this, they see it, oh yeah, yeah. And they, they see that, like I've turned the time back over to them. And they're like, I'm waiting like 10 minutes, I'm like, yeah, I ain't ever gonna get this back. So say, yeah, yeah, acknowledge it, make sure that you're communicating, that you're still involved but you send it back to the senior partner and let them go. The, yeah. Just because someone calls on you or, or brings you in a little bit does not mean the call's back in your court, if you will. You're still in a learning mode. Just let them, if you trust someone enough to be on a third party, let them run it all. And it does not make you less than, it just means that's that's how it's best done. And again, guys, this is not about, it's not about <laughs> the senior partner getting to feel better about himself after the call or you as the junior partner feeling good about yourself. It's about the prospect. And so the two on one just doesn't work. And I'll also understand when you set up one of these three way calls, the, what's going through most people's mind when they get set up is, oh man, like Will's thinking, man, Kevin's getting me on, on, on this call with Fred because like he wants Fred to close me. Like he wants Fred, he wants, <laughs> Fred's the this is what he's thinking. Fred's the, Fred's the closer. Fred's his partner at EXP. He's going to, you know, he's going to be the one to close me, bring Fred. And then immediately, like when I show up and I'm like, hey, well, this is all about you, man. I don't have a preconceived agenda. What would you like to talk about today? It completely diffuses the situation. You will see some people's body language physically change when it gets passed and you go right into this because they came in expecting one thing to happen and you just totally changed it, pulled the chair out from under him, if you will, and did something different, right? So it's a really cool experience when everybody on the call, the senior and the junior partner, know what they're doing and they're all kind of playing from the from the same playbook. So I just wanted to say that. And I'm sorry, I left no, you no, hanging no, for a while. Good. So with that, you know, real estate, we're always told that we always need to ask for the business. So in your next steps part, like when we asking for the business? When are we, when are we going? Closing. When are we closing? Well, understand at the end of, of the model explained, Brent, and for, like, for those of you that have watched that, Brent talks about like the next part of your due diligence is to what? Talk to your sponsor. Go to, yeah, talk to the person that introduced you to this video and go to join.exprealty.com. And while you're there, like, why don't you go ahead and fill out your application and get approved? You don't have to join. Hopefully just, some of this, just, just get approved, right? We're not gonna transfer your license. You're the only one that can do that. So Brent's like got closing stuff like embedded in here as you watch this and you get to know this video really well. Um, and it just depends. Like if, 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 if uh, Will and uh, my example on here is asking like, oh man, like how do I transition? Like then like what one of my things might be, well, Will, what I've found with people that have independent brokerages is that how many agents do you have? He says, oh, I got 10 or okay. Cool. Well, are there one or two or maybe three that are pretty influential? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, dude, if you get to that place, Will, where you're at the kind of like 90, 95, 98% mark and you want to do this, here's my advice. Here's what's worked really well. So I would get your couple top people together. I would share what you want to do with them. I wouldn't ask them do they, do they, for their blessing and sign off. I would tell them, hey, I want to do this, blah, 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 right? And then the next day, I would have all your other agents ready for a meeting. So I'd tell your topic. So I'm like, I'm walking, depending on where the questions are at, I'm walking them through how to transition. I got on a three-way call on Tuesday. You did a three-way call with this same person 
Again, Adam in Washington set a three-way call with you last week while I was out of town. You got you then I set a double three-way three call, yeah. and you put me on it on Tuesday. And you and you and Adam thought that we were going to be trying to convince the husband to join EXP, like the wife was we there. She was in, and I mean, so you were like, "Here's going to be the husband's hot button issues." I get on the Zoom, husband's not there, so of course Adam and I are like, "Hey, is, is your husband joining us?" Because we know he's a decision maker. Yeah, he should be. I'll find him. But um, just so you guys know, over the weekend, like we watched some videos, and I, I think I got him. I convinced him. He's he's ready to do this, right? So the three-way call now shifted from convince my husband to how do I make a transition? I've been at my same brokerage for 18, 19 years. She's the number seven agent in the entire state of Washington. Like she's a big deal. Moving over to EXP, and so then it became like. How do we tell our broker? Where do we fill out the application? I, I have somebody that wants to join before me. Can they do that? So we started talking about LOI. It just organically comes up. So I'm trying to say. Like it will come, if, you, if things are going well in the process, they will often tell you. And if we're paying attention, we're tuned in, they will tell you. That's not to say there's not times where you, where you might want to ask to keep check, check in. But at most cases, if you're following this process really well, and they're, re they're actually interested, they'll, they'll tell you. We have a friend on the East Coast who Kevin and I and Curtis and Dave Kennard and Brent Go and probably two or three other Countless people other have people. done at least seven or eight three-way calls with them. And we're at the place where like, he just needs to freaking make a decision. Like there's <laughs> nothing left to tell him, right? <laughs> and so guess what? Like he's not ready to make a decision. So it's just kind of crickets right now. Like we check in every once in a while, but like I, I, there's not another three-way call on the planet I could set up that's gonna move him over. He has to wake up one day and say, I wanna do this, right? And so we're at that place. Like he's he's looked at it upside down and backwards. So it's very organic is how I, how I would answer that. I don't know, do you have a different answer to that, Curtis? Or would you say it just, it becomes evident when they're ready to join? The only other thing I would say is even like when Brent brought this to me and I was like, no, he kept in touch with me every couple of weeks by text and call and, and he, he didn't call my ESP. He just like, hey, how's the family doing? And how's everything going? He just loved me. He just loved me just the same. And he, and he would say that if you keep in touch with people only because you want them to join and make money off them, then you're a user. And they know. They're going to know that. And, and, and that you've got you've to gotta just go, you know what? I'm comfortable enough that I just, I love you for you. I love you if you stay where you're at. I'd love to be business partners. But I just love you for you. And you've got to be okay with that. And just keep in touch with people. But again, they, they're going to know if you're if you see them as a dollar sign, they're going to feel like a dollar sign, yep. and they don't have to be. Yep. And I think you get on enough calls. I've kind of heard you do it, Curtis and Kevin. and I've done it. It's like, well, I think I answered most of your questions today. Well, like any any new ones come up, or like what's what's the next step for us? Like sometimes the senior partner is just like, all right, dude. Like sounds like you're kind of in, or like we got like like you're on board about like what. So the lady last week, literally. Adam and I, I forget who said it first, we both were like, uh, Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, like, you're, you're there, like, we just got to answer, like, Chris's questions, right, like, this one, this one objection that he has, which is really silly, she's like, oh, yeah, she's like, I'm in, I, I want to do this, we, we've got to help him overcome this mental obstacle, like, that's it, so you can ask, you can ask that in the conversation, you can find it, but again, you've got to be really tuned in to them, if you're gonna pick up on that and know what to ask. Yep. All right, I'm just gonna end this whole dialogue with saying like, there's sort of a bonus fifth step here, if you guys will. Oh, we are still gonna get the bonus? I'm gonna get the bonus. You guys are gonna get the bonus? You guys want a bonus? Yeah. Yeah. It got warm I'm here, a bonus you guys guy. turned the air up and now the energy went down. <laughs> so somebody is making coal as the Arctic. Uh, it is for us. It's toasty in here. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the fifth step bonus is just continue following up. But I'm gonna tell you, Events. The best number five type of follow-up you could ever do is events. Why? Because people make big decisions at events. Right, Jackie? Yeah. Jackie Edgar, where did I meet you guys? In Vegas. Cool. <laughs> Who brought you? Diana and Oh, your sponsor Diana. brought you to an event in Vegas, and that's where I met you and you joined EXP. Interesting how that works, right? Right there on the spot, actually. <laughs> right? right on the spot. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Here's, the, here's, here's what events yeah. do, guys. We all agree it's a process, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at an event, yeah. a big event, even sometimes a smaller event, we can create multiple interactions. By the way, it wasn't one meeting with Jackie and Edgar at that event in Las Vegas. It was a meeting with Fred and Aaron. It was a meeting with Aaron or uh, Andrew. It was a meeting with Deanna and Eric. Like there was, so what you can do is we get to compact time 
And we get to have a lot of interactions all in a short period of time, sometimes three or four in a day. <clears throat> yeah. But think about this, if it's 14 and we go to something, I don't know, like EXPCon or Tony Robbins, and it's like a three day <clears throat> event, holy crap, you could have nine or 10 different interactions between coffee with uh, someone else who has a similar business model that's a little further down the road, the president of the company, you might run into Glenn in the hallway, oh my gosh, there's Nolly Williams, I know that guy from YouTube. Like you have the ability to create 10, 15 magical, special moments for that person in a three-day event. Yeah. That's how you compact time. That's how you supercharge this. At the end of the day, like you mentioned, like how, how soon until I can go to the next step? I don't know, it depends on our calendars, guys. Most real estate agents I know not only are busy, but they're busy thinking they're busy even when they're not busy. So like that's why I also commended you guys earlier today for taking the time out of your schedule because you could be busy. You could have chosen to go to a closing or like some of our friends think they already know the process. And you could have opted for that. But instead you opted to show up to an event and invest in, your, in yourself. So when we can get people to do that, it helps us and it helps them in a short period of time. Step five, events. Seriously, was last was the Scottsdale event pretty good for you guys? I know you're already oh, yeah. in, Woo. but like, did it solidify it more? Did, we it signed fun. up for Scottsdale before we even moved our life. I know, that's what I freaking love. <laughs> well, hold on. But who invited you? Guys you guys are black labs. Yeah. You guys are black labs. You are a literal black lab. Yeah. yeah. You're, 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 you're a black lab. Yeah. But Will, yeah. whether he was super purposeful about it or it was just like, hey, let's your sponsor said, let's go to an event, and you signed up before you'd even joined the company. Yeah. Like, events, guys, they work. Last year's been kind of tough for some of this. Imagine, think how much EXP's grown over the last like 14, 15 months since COVID, and we haven't had events. Guys, I get it. We, you know, seriously. It's, it's about to get, it's about to supercharge here <laughs> as more and more of these events are starting to happen. We a are at a way. special moment in time. Uh, the gentleman, I'm forgetting his name, that was up here earlier at lunch, he talked about how great it was Miguel. to, to Miguel. Miguel, to talk, Miguel mentioned multiple times how great it was to be around people in real life again. Yeah. There are a lot of real estate professionals who feel that exact same way right now. They mm -hmm. actually haven't been to an event. Mm -hmm. And so we've, I don't know, I don't know if it's in the last six months, nine months, a year, but we have people who are even like more introverted, like Curtis and Fred, who don't really love going to events and being around a lot of people actually are willing to go to more events today than they were two years ago. Yeah. So that's a, that's another way that we have to supercharge it. Evan, do we know next year where Brent is having, like we went to Fort Boyata and then? Yeah, BrentGo.com only has, uh, only has the build yeah. conference. I think it stops as, at as the next build event. conference. He yeah. said he's gonna, do, he's gonna do Mexico again, either late this year, or early next year again. Where in Mexico? Probably say he loves that, he loves that place. Okay. And he loves the uh -huh. Desert Ridge in Scottsdale. He'll yeah, gonna, yeah. Yeah. Probably See, a little bit later. Here's the thing you guys can know. Brent's gonna put on three to four events a year. And he's EXP is gonna have the next one or two events. EXP time. is gonna have two a year, right? Shareholders in EXPCon. EXPCon's coming up in Las Vegas in person later this year. Um, right? And then you gotta also know like Kevin and Curtis and I, like we're gonna throw our fair share of events. Curtis has an event in Phoenix he's gonna be doing in the next 90 days. Kevin and I have an event um, uh, June 24th, 25th in Salt Lake City. You guys are all invited, but you can only come if you bring a non-EXP guest. That's your ticket to entry. It's a real estate mastermind on the 24th, and then the 25th is basically a, a presentation of Curtis, similar to kind of what you guys saw here today, uh, but more in depth for, for even a couple more hours. So uh, you're gonna see us do that. We're gonna pull off another event, probably late August or, or September. Curtis is gonna do one between now and then. Like, there's gonna be events. And here's the here's the mindset shift that I've had to make and I encourage you to make. It's not about like, do I wanna to go to the event? Am I gonna learn from it? It's like, who can I bring to that event that might make a decision to join EXP or who's already joined me at EXP that might get more fired up to build something even bigger for themselves by going to that event. Like, that's the mindset. It's not just we want you guys to fly all around the country and come to all these events because you don't have anything better to do. It's like, no, bring people with you. People make decisions at events. Like, use the events as your leverage point. You guys follow us on that? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. You guys have a, a little bit more energy left in you? Woo! Okay, cool. So this is called the wealth chart. Who, uh, who has a wealth chart printed out? Like a big old one hanging on your wall somewhere. 
person Ooh, five. Cool. A couple of us. Did you just do that recently? Yes. yes. All right. I haven't said this yet, but Jackie and Andrew, we highlighted them earlier that they came from um, El Paso today, but um, they actually like came to this exact same class on April 1st, and then they came back again today, yeah. which I think is freaking awesome uh, because like they're doing stuff. Like they built a list last time they were in the class. They're over there adding more names to it today. Like to me, that's just, we need these reminders, right? Yeah, and, by the way, so people make big decisions at big events. Some of you made a decision today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like we gotta get sold ourselves, guys. Right. If we're not sold, it's like, so like, yes, we gotta come when we've gotta bring people with us. And sometimes we're the person we gotta bring with us too. Yeah. So before we do the wealth chart, last page in your handout, we already talked about the build conference. <laughs> the other thing you can do to just stay plugged in guys is Mondays, three o'clock central. Oh, yeah. Show up on our Zoom. It's our EXP yeah. recruiting mastermind. Oh, yeah. We've been running 20 to 30, 35, 40 people showing up over the last couple of weeks. It's just a place to, I'm not telling you you're gonna come to, the, come to that Monday Zoom and hear something you've never heard before every single week that's gonna like knock your socks off. It's a place to get reminded that, oh yeah, that works. Oh yeah, I'm hearing Nolly's story. Oh, I'm hearing Jackie and Edgar, what they're doing. I'm hearing Eric, but I'm hearing Will's story, right? I'm, I'm, it's a place to just come and get reminded and that, that, let that belief muscle, if you will, continue to get built and get excited. And it's also a place to meet more of the people that are in our EXP community that are growing revenue share and are focused on this. So Monday's at three central, the Zoom thing's on there. It's and nice to get reminded. We just like Mondays because Fred also showers on Mondays. So it's just it's really easy. I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, whether he needs it or not, he showers on Mondays is what he says. Every single time. All right. Wealth chart. So some of you guys know what this is. Um, I would write this down next to the wealth chart, and, and this is why I think it's important. It's a combination of a scoreboard and a vision board. It's a combo of a scoreboard and a vision board. And the reason that some of us like track the number of calls we make in our business, or the number of text messages we send, or emails we send, or the number of people we have in our database in our sphere is because there's something to having scoreboards. There's something to tracking what we're doing, right? There's also something to be said about setting goals and having places you're aiming. And so to me, this wealth chart does all of this in one, okay? So let's go through and you wanna do any of this? No, I'll, I'll explain it all. Perfect, okay. So let's go through it and talk, and talk about this. Um, let's go down to, uh, let's go down to these freedom numbers right here. So I'm gonna ask you guys, you don't have to share this out loud, but write on your piece of paper, what do your freedom numbers look like? So let me help you with that. <clears throat> the revenue should be pretty easy. I'll ask, you know, earlier today, Curtis said like, what's the amount of money that would change your life? He said that for a lot of people, it's 3,000, 5,000, $10,000 a month. Uh, I think he said more like five or six, but would absolutely change their life, right? So your freedom number, is that number where, like that's that life-changing number. Like, so for some of you that was 10,000, for some of you that was five, for some of you that was 25, 30, write down that number, put it in a yearly dollar amount though, if you would, right? What's that number look like? I'm not even asking you when you're gonna do it by, but just what's the dollar amount that, if you did it a year from now, five years from now, seven years from now, it'd be like, man, if I had, X dollar amount, 30,000 coming in every year. If I had $60,000 coming in every year, I, I would literally be free in a, in, a, in a way, right? I wouldn't have to wake up and necessarily have to go sell a house, okay? So write down that freedom number. That's the revenue, the bottom box. The agent box, there's some different um, explanations on this and whatever else. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'll give you my thought. Curtis, you can tell me if you think differently. <clears throat> All we can control, as Curtis has been talking about, is the number of direct people we recruit, okay? Right, it's the number of, of FLAs, frontline active agents, that I'll define here in a minute. But when you go bring in more than two, I think Curtis said 25, come talk to me when you have 25. You go bring in 25 frontline agents and you will build a revenue share group. Like, some of them will go out and duplicate and grow, right? And so, Let's say you bring in 25 and, and over time you build a revenue share group of 100 people, okay? A revenue share group of 100 people, you can pretty much take that revenue share group of 100 and multiply it by about $600 per agent and that'll give you roughly what your yearly income could be, right? So as an example, and, and Curtis, tell me if you, if you think any differently on this, but like if, if my number is, hey, I wanna make $60,000, how many people didn't have my revenue share group? 
So I would say I, I've had thoughts about this. A lot of times people go, well, hey, how, many, how much do you make per agent? And I used to answer that question, and now I always answer with zero. Mm. And they go, well, no, 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 like, I mean, per agent. Like, how much do you make per agent? And I said, nothing. And I go, that's an MLM. MLM is you get paid per agent. And I get paid nothing per agent. What I get paid is when they sell houses and they're productive. Oh, that's good. And, and so they go, well, oh. I go, yeah, so if they sell zero houses, I get zero money. So I only get paid when they become productive. And I only get paid um, as people are duplicate, right? And so I believe that you can really, really impact your first three. Now, not that you can't impact more, but you can really impact your first three levels, right? Your th first three tiers. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that you can you can impact your entire organization, right? If you go, well, my organization isn't growing, then you're just not duplicating. This isn't about trying to get, you know, 50 in your front line and then none on your second, yeah. right? Because I thought, I, I thought, okay, I'm gonna get to 100 people in my organization. You know what I thought? I'm gonna have to recruit 50 and then it'll turn into 100. No, you bring in 50, it turns into 5,000, right? And what happens is it's way stickier and bigger, but you've gotta go through and be willing to do that work. And so, and you know how you can tell if you did the work? If it duplicates. Because remember, you're creating duplication, you're not creating solopreneurs, right? That you're bringing in people that duplicate. And if you've done that right, then it duplicates. And then you don't have to worry about tier four, five, six, and seven. And if it doesn't duplicate, guess what you brought? You didn't do it right. You brought, you just brought in single people are single without without duplicating, right? So you've got to, if you do it right, you duplicate, then it duplicates. Love it, dude. So I can just tell you, like, I've got a revenue share group of, I'm coming up on 1,200, I'm like 1,175 or something like that this morning. Uh, so, you know, like a number that I would use just to say, hey, like, how much is that worth, like, over the next 365 days? Like it's worth six, maybe six hundred dollars an agent, seven hundred. Why? Because like Curtis is saying, like, like you're not counting. It's not per agent. It's it's for so productive it's agents, productive right? People. So of eleven hundred and seventy five people that are in my seven levels of revenue share, some of them sell zero houses, some of them sell a hundred houses and cap out, some of them sell four houses and half cap, right? Like, and all sorts of different things. So that's kind of like that. That was the mindset behind why like, we didn't come up with this, right? This is us sharing with you like a tool that was, was created by other people before us. But if you wanted to have, you know, $60,000 worth of yearly revenue, that's $5,000 per month, you probably need to have 100 or so agents in your revenue share group to do that. Yeah. That's about $600 per agent. Like, Nolly, if you don't if you don't mind sharing, like, you, what do you got going on? I have uh, 224 okay. agents, and um, my rest share last month was 15000 So I guess it's about... Couple hundred thousand, yeah. But it's closer to about eight hundred. Yeah, you're supposed to say right. And everybody's different. Like Kevin and I, we and I'm not like this is an excuse or whatever else. I we just we've recruited a lot of teams because we know teams. So teams come over with agents, which is awesome. But those agents also come over on half caps and quarter caps. So depending upon the size of your group, the makeup of your group, you're gonna find you're gonna find different numbers, right? Um, I don't want to necessarily go through all this right here, but on the bottom left, and I know I'm bouncing all around, but this is the score. This is a little vision board. That's why I started there. This is a little scoreboard. This is where you would go into your My EXP page, and maybe if we have time, Curtis can come up and share his. But this is where you go on your My EXP page, and EXP makes it real easy now to see how many agents you have in your first line, how many agents you have in your second line, how many you have in your third, your fourth, your fifth, right? And so you would just write these numbers down, Curtis changes uh, updates his numbers somewhere in the ballpark of once a day to a couple times a week kevin and i do ours a minimum of once a month at least every single month i update my numbers um i don't know if there's a right or wrong curtis is probably doing it more correctly because he's making more money than i am at rev share so i should probably update mine daily well, the um, thing, things we track grow yep right i You're mean it's like if, if you don't care about your business don't track it if you care like the people that track their income and track the things, it, it forces you to focus on it, right? And I would say the smaller it is, the more you should focus on it. Because well, it just means you're not putting enough attention on it. Yeah. So anyway, this is a real life count of what your thing is. Um, I'm not gonna go through this, but you can figure out the potential revenue of every person in your first line. Like a first line capping agent is worth $2,800, right? Second line is 3,200 and so on. 
Uh, but you can go through and figure out the, the numbers and then you'll see at the bottom left. So the wealth chart actually uses a $800 per person average. So that's more in line with like what Nolly has. Mine tends to be closer to six to 700. So that's just why I use that number, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So also on the left hand side, this is where we're also going to say scoreboard stuff, right? So who can tell me what an FLQA is? Frontline qualifying agent. Oh. Frontline qualifying agent. How does one, somebody besides Patrick, how does one become a frontline qualifying agent? 5,000 in commission, two transactions. Okay, so they have named you as their sponsor and they have done $5,000 or more in GCI in the last six months. The two transaction thing is now completely gone. Okay. Correct, Curtis? Yeah. That's been, that has been, I just wanna make sure. Yeah, it's been gone a couple months now. So, um, so yeah, so it's like somebody that names you at, as, as their sponsor and they've done 5,000 or more in GCI in the previous six months. And that's a rolling active total, if you guys don't know that. Again, go into your My EXP dashboard, like you can see, like, hey, their F you can see their FLQA expires. Hey, they closed a deal recently. Their FLQA expiration date got pushed out, right? Like it's a, it's a revolving, moving, moving target all the time. Unqualified simply represents somebody that has named you as their sponsor, but is not qualified. So you're still their sponsor, but they just haven't done 5,000 or more GCI in the last six months. So for me, I think I'm at, gosh, I should know the number, 40, I wanna say 43 agents that have named me as their sponsor, 23 of them are qualified, and I have 20 unqualified. So I, like, I've been working, trying to get the 20 people that I've helped bring into EXP, a lot of them are on my team, some of them are new, right? Like to actually go out and close a deal, right? Because I want them to qualify, right? So the reason that we, you, you, put, the, you put names in these categories is because like you're actively watching this. Curtis, how much do you care about the number 39 versus 43? <laughs> you know, about two or three months ago, like it, I was, I wasn't losing, but I was missing out on about eighty-two thousand dollars that was unrealized money. About eighty-two thousand one hundred ninety-four. Approximately. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, but the reality is okay. So it was I, I was missing out on about fifteen thousand. And I actually told Brent Gilb, I said, I never want more than twenty-five people. I go, why would I ever like? I go, I'm so comfortable with twenty-five. Why would I ever? I don't even care. And he goes, dude, you're gonna care. It's gonna, it, it, you're gonna really care. And he goes, you better start building right now because it's gonna take you about a year or two to get from, to get all the qual, you know, get them qualified. He goes, it's you, you need to go right now. This isn't something you decide to go do one month and it happens. And I go, yeah, okay. And so then I got to twenty and twenty-five and thirty. And then actually, and then I started going, yeah, I really would like the money. That would be really cool to be able to do it. But I go, you know what? To do a lot of good things in the world, you need money. Like Mother Teresa was amazing. She was a great fundraiser as well. And the more money you got in the hands of good people doing good things, hopefully we do it, right? Hopefully you don't just go blow it. Um, and I said, you know what? If, if this is an opportunity, I need to go do it. And so I need to focus on getting people and then getting them qualified, right? And what, what can I do? How can I help you at a deeper level? And if you look, my front line is pretty much flatlined the last 18 months or whatever, because almost all of my attention has been on helping everybody I'm trying to do that. And then saying, what can I do to help get you a home sale? Yeah. How, uh, you know, what we'll say the do? number in your front line is flat line, but yeah. the number of people that have become FLQAs has increased. Absolutely. Because you and, focus and, on helping and it them happen, get And it'll happen to everybody. All of a sudden, it'll get there, but it starts to add up um, because it will. if you take care of the width, the depth takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so if people have made you as their sponsor, they're going to go in an FLQA or, uh, or unqualified one or the other. Again, every five basically unlocks another level. So I just want to say this real quickly and then I'll move on. But some of you guys need to go look in my EXP because some of you guys probably have agents in your third level, your fourth level. Meaning you brought somebody into EXP and then they brought somebody in who brought somebody in. And so you've got some agents that are down here in your second, third, fourth, fifth level, but you only have four FLQAs or you only have seven FLQAs. Meaning that you're not making the maximum amount of money. I like that Curtis didn't say I'm losing money. I'm just missing out on the opportunity to earn more. I think the losing is sort of like, oh man, I'm losing 80,000 a month. That sounds kind of like victimish and just sort of childish as well. It's like, oh cool, Curtis made 150 last month instead of 230. I feel so bad for you, right? <laughs> but like, it's like, no, I'm missing out on the opportunity. And that's why you have a wall chart because you're intently clear on like, how many more FLQAs do I need, right? So that's how that works. Year one, two, three, four, five. This is just like to let you see kind of, hey, like, like after 12 months, I had 
175 people in my rep share group. And after 24 months, I had 400, right? Just to let you track and kind of watch the growth of that, okay? On the right-hand side, this is a little bit more of that vision board, a little scoreboard, a little vision board. Hit lists down here at the bottom are like, it's taking your top 50 that you wrote down today and going, man, which of these people are like, like, yeah, these are my A's. These are people I'm going after, right? Like I, I want to I have active conversations with them. And working hot is like, I took somebody on my hit list and I now have them watch a video. And I now define that as a working hot. You follow me? Like, would you guys agree if they're yes. pretty working hot, if they've been through a video with you, right? And in process is probably like, I've taken them through a video and one or two three-way calls. And now we're in process of them filling out their joint application and coming over, right? So I've moved them from hit list into working hot into in process. And once I get them on board at EXP, Generals is probably another name for Black Labs. Mm -hmm. They probably don't even need that many boxes if we're being honest, right, Curtis? I mean, there's a, maybe a few people that three. You probably only need three up there. But, it, but, but you can put the, the generals on your the generals. The quality is in the quantity, right? Is that you don't know who are going to be your black labs. You don't know who that is, right? Everyone, like if you if you did the survey, you. everybody thinks they are. Yeah. They'll tell you who they are. They're, no, ev everybody, sa you. everybody says they are, but the black labs will do the work to show they are. The black labs come in hot, like Patrick. <laughs> like they, but he, he, took, he took action, right? Yes. But how many people talk about it? Or they go, dang. I see it now. I'm ready to go. Yeah, we can and all we can all be black labs as we they, walk out. They don't sit around and go, Curtis. I'm, I'm a black lab, dude. I'm I'm a general for you, Curtis. They don't they don't do that. They go, oh, I got it, and they go to work. Yeah. Anyway, I'll just say this: there's something powerful about having this hanging on your wall. Um, two things. Write these down. Number one, go inside the Kevin and Fred workplace community. Go inside the Kevin and Fred workplace community and just use the search button. For wealth chart we have a whole video film 30 or 40 minutes so you can refresh up on this we probably got a little more detail in that video than i just did here today um, there's also uh, a downloadable file that you can download right to your computer and there's printing instructions so like if you want to print this out and have it on a big foam poster board hanging above your desk like a lot of us do there's a downloadable file and printing instructions inside the cabinet Fred workplace community also write down honey badger group Honey Badger group in, in Facebook. Um, that is Jay Kinder, Michael Reese, Alby Stasek. They've got, uh, again, go search Wealth Chart. They've got a video. They've got the download a printable file. But what they also have, if you search Wealth Chart, is you'll see there's a couple people. I don't even know him. His name's Dan Hillsman, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. him, but he's the most accountable person in the entire Honey Badger accountability group. Because you want to know what he does every month? He posts a picture of his Wealth Chart. For accountability it's pretty amazing I, I don't know this guy like i don't know if he runs a hundred million dollar team i don't get the impression he does he's the most humble guy i don't know that he's been in the business for 40 years i don't get the impression he has no nope. he's just he's a black lab that is following a process and a model and and takes a screenshot every single month the picture of his wealth chart and posts it in honey badgers and he says here's my accountability for the month because some point last year or the year before he made a commitment that on a monthly basis he would share this so he was accountable to growing it and moving it forward. And I just think it's freaking awesome that he does it. Yeah. And that's what you guys are going to do in your group too. That's what we're going to be doing, right? It's holding each other accountable. Yep. We got some of that stuff coming out too. If you guys, if you don't like accountability, whatever, you can, don't come. But if you like accountability, uh, we're going to be building some of that in the next 60 days too. Some cool stuff happening. So um, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, Curtis, you can come on up and Ollie can come up too if you want. And any closing thoughts? But I want to end by saying something that Curtis said earlier. I think it deserves to be repeated. Um, number one, you got to get your mind right. You got to believe that you can do this. Number two, give yourself grace. Like, it's easy. Like, I can even tell in the room. Like, it's like, oh, we start talking about this, and some of you are like, shit, I'm going to print out a piece of paper on a, on a phone board and spend $100 so I can see a bunch of zeros. Like, I can just feel that. Like, so that's how some of us feel right now, right? You gotta give yourself grace. What did, what did Curtis say? Like, give yourself the grace that like you can start over today. Like, you didn't know all this stuff before today, did you? I don't think you guys did. Like, you might have known some of this, but you didn't know the four steps at this depth. You didn't know some of the stuff Curtis shared at the depth that he shared. So, yeah, I, I mean, you gotta have the belief and the right mindset that you can do it, and then you gotta give yourself the grace to walk out of here to actually go do it. You also have gotta give yourself the commitment to make it happen. Yeah. So. 
here's, I, I know Cursor, your slide's still up here. Um, was there like, oh yeah, all right. Four hours a week, guys. A lot of people go, how do I do this? Because that sounds like a lot. We just gave you four simple steps with a bonus. But how do I do that? And some of you are like, I'm a freaking black lab. Let's go 45 hours a week. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, like that, like that's not the answer. No, no, I don't. I'm not trying to squish, squish your dreams. But here's the deal. A, a, a friend of mine, Dustin, taught me this. He's like, people, you, you don't have confidence because you don't give yourself something to be confident about. And the way you do that is with what my friend John would call a micro commitment. Four hours a week is, is I would consider a micro commitment. And by the way, if four hours seems big to you right now. <laughs> then do two yeah. or freaking one. I don't care. But it's four. It's not ten hours, and it's not twenty. If you're at zero now, you're not going to ten or twenty. It's four hours a week, and if you spend four hours a week focusing on this, what will happen is you will start to have more options. And if if it's four hours a week, one hour a week can be with us on Mondays at one p.m. Pacific, two p.m. Central, or three p.m. Central. That could be an hour, and the other three is actually going to be out generating appointments, going through the four simple steps, right? And here's what happens. As you start to have success in four hours a week, you start to get some wins. You start to feel more confident because you kept the commitment to yourself about what you were gonna do for just those four little hours a week. Well, all of a sudden that rev share goes from zero to like 110 and that's five times more than KW ever gave you, right? And now you got a little confident. You're like, I did, I freaking did that. In 45 days, I did that. And so now, you know what? You, that Maybe that number becomes a thousand and you go, dude, I could actually, if this is gonna give me a thousand bucks a month, I could probably do like six hours a week. Or, or maybe it's gonna give me enough time to do eight hours a week. And one day you look, I don't know if it's in six months or, or in two years, but one day you look up and the rev share number is big enough to where you go, I just could decide what the hell I wanna do. And so maybe maybe I'm gonna sell less real estate this year because I made that decision. And, I, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go all in on this. Or maybe you're gonna go all in on vacation, I don't know. The point is, is when you when you work on this and you spend time, you get to decide rather than your residual bills deciding for you. Because right now we all let our clients decide, we let our residual bills decide what we're gonna do instead of taking what we do have, what we can't control, which is four hours. If you don't have four hours, you definitely need four hours. Like we all have four hours in our week that we can control whether we think we do or not. That's a different challenge, but we all have four hours. Start there, give yourself some, some little wins so you get you build up some confidence, and then you decide. Then you're in charge. Who's start with the cowboy hat, start with your voice, voice trembling, just start, something like that. Yeah, right? who's doing four hours of Netflix a week? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I spend four Netflix hours just trying to find out what I want to watch on Netflix. <laughs> Two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Let's give a round of applause. Did we deliver? Did they deliver? Yeah. Yes. They delivered. Yeah. yeah. How many of you guys are excited? You're, how, how many black labs we got in the room? Raise your hand, black lab. <laughs> All right, we got some black labs out there. So this is, I love these guys. Um, it's kind of weird being up here with Kevin with closed-toed shoes. Uh, that, that's, 2020 was hard on us all. Dude. I let him take shots of me around showers <laughs> and plenty of other things. Yeah, and, not, not sell out. 2020 was sell weird, out. man. Yeah. So thank you guys for coming. It, this was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Revenue Share has changed my life. It is the best uh, business opportunity that I've ever seen in any business. And I study a lot of different businesses, a lot of different models. Um, this is the, the best model that I've seen, definitely in real estate, hands down, but in business in general. Um, I call it the two year career. You know, I did this for two years, kept my nose down, and, um, and I was able to retire, you know, after two years of doing this. Um, I built the revenue share up to that point. So it really is, it's life changing. And um, I, it, it, for me, it's extra special because I, I know I'm gonna see many of you that a year from now or two years, you're gonna be like, man, we came to that li li little class and we finally kicked it in or we got it into a higher gear or we finally got our, you know, unlocked all of our levels or whatever, the, whatever that is for you. So. Um, I wish you guys success. Are there any questions that 
that we haven't answered or any anything that you guys have? Because you guys got to get on a plane, don't you? We do. Yeah, and there's some weird stuff we're, going on at the airport. Right where now. are my cookies uh -huh. for lunch? That's my only question. Man. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a. I thought you guys did were you tell me about the crumble cookie thing? Yeah, no. Oh, I was big ten. The gift. I'm gonna say. Okay. Something. Anyway, that's anyway. <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to tell you about cookies. <laughs> this guy's a cookie monster. <laughs> um, we did record this, and I, I I made a promise that I wouldn't record it. But when they got here, they asked me if I would, so I did. So if anybody want a copy of this recording, mm -hmm. okay. wow. yeah. make sure you share it with your Just people. Just a few raise their hands. Okay, the ones that raised their hands, which we took note, I got it on video. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, will you also, would, um, before, you know, today or this weekend, will you distribute the KC video yes. of the three-way call? Because there's some of you in the room that you probably have people that are going to want you to get on three-way calls, but they're not here today. Yeah. You need to sit down with your folks and watch that video with them. Mm -hmm. So you don't have, I mean, we did our own presentation of it, but it was just a you know regurgitation of hers. Just watch that video. With I did my own press of it too. Yeah, okay. but hers is the best. Hers yeah. is the best. So um, if you're if you're wanting to do the three ways, if you go to nolly.com slash three way um, that I gave you earlier, that's where you can actually learn how to do a three way call. Um, I've got a video where I teach you how to do it. Uh, Casey's video is the best. I'll go ahead and put that video up on the bottom. <laughs> so it'll be there too. Uh, but I saw a couple hands. Yeah, you were going to share information about getting listings class? Yeah, so that, that class is already full, right? That class is full. That class is full. Um, I have to have headcount every week, but you might be able to come. I can't add more lunches. Um, are y'all on the Austin Metro group and workplace? Make sure you add yourself to the Austin Metro group because every week, every Tuesday, and we're doing different classes in person real estate related so every Tuesday y'all get yeah. that so it's free. well we're trying to work on that because we have to pay for the space not a lot of spaces will allow more than 10 people because of COVID still yeah. um, one place we found will allow us up to 100 150 what come up here Curtis no I'm just gonna I'm having Curtis come um, while you talk so right now it's 20 per head but that includes lunch and everything else so we're trying to get sponsors to bring that down um, or maybe potentially move it to somewhere else that will be less. But right now it's 20 ahead. Last week we talked about market updated and multiple offers. Next week, Nolly, we're gonna talk about listings. Um, on the 15th, I believe I have somebody coming up to Austin to do hands-on KD core, oh, nice. computers, like we're gonna knock it all out. Nice. Um, Julie Nelson's gonna teach on um, success faster. I'm gonna teach on 101 ways to lead generate and market to your sphere. So each week we have different topics that are real estate related. We may throw in an EXP lunch and learn every now and then, but we just don't know that yet. So yeah. get into the Austin Metro group. I'm an admin, so um, if you're not in Austin and it doesn't say Austin in your profile, send me a workplace chat because then I'll let you in. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So yeah. give the listeners a And, and this, is, this is really leadership at a high level. So. Um, Elizabeth does need partners to, to help, and, and some, I know there's a lot of you guys. If we actually look into our organization, we got photographers, web designers, we got, and maybe some in the room. So don't do not do this by yourself, Elizabeth. You know, we'll, well, we'll, no, and here's the whole thing, y'all. We're all different, I don't know whose mind we're in, because I, really, I don't think it really matters all that much, but the better we all are as agents, the better we look in the community, the better EXP looks, the easier it is to, to attract. That's true. Right? That's and true. we want you to invite guests to those meetings too. So guests are allowed to buy them a ticket. They're talking about inviting 20 bucks. I mean, I know a few hundred dollars for brunch event might be a little steep for some people, but yeah. go buy them lunch for 20 bucks. Just say, hey, we're, we're doing a listings class or we're doing whatever. So we're going to try and put a calendar together so everybody kind of knows upcoming, upcoming events. I'm just trying to figure out how to make this <laughs> work easy. But yeah, um, yeah that's what it's for all of us to be better together. I love it. I love okay. it. So, uh, did you have any parting words first? Um, I just appreciate you, Nolly. I appreciate you. Um, I, we know we love Nolly, right? And, and here's the thing: um, there's a lot of people that we all kind of want to go create. We're creators, right? And he's one of the best I've seen. But he's also one of the people that is dedicated to a group and saying, you know what? This isn't just about what I can do, but how can I pivot? and say, how do I bring more success to our group? And sometimes that's hard for us builders, right? But if you watch Nolly and what he's done over the last couple months, to be able to go from, hey, you know what? I, I can create everything. Yeah. To, you know what, this isn't just about me being at the top of the mountain. How do I bring more people with me? And if you guys have watched that evolution, 
that's probably one of the hardest things to ever to do. So I just want to honor and love and, and acknowledge you going, you. this isn't just about you, but this is about all of us. So let's give Nolly a round of applause. That's leadership. You just about him winning but him going not just I don't just need to win but everybody needs to win together so uh, it's just an honor to be in the room and uh, love you guys and let's all let's all go to the next event and let's bring people there Woo all right class is dismissed thank yeah. you <laughs> okay.